working on ninja skills now. <laughs> Welcome to Warrior Class. Where the teachers will pass. And you will too if you pass. We've got uh, special guests here. Really special to me. It's, it's uh, my daughter, Yamie. She's still kind of off there. Yeah. There we go. There's Yamie right there. Uh, today's episode is your child safe? Uh, I believe my child's safe. Uh, <laughs> she definitely safe right now, but as far as when she's not with me, uh, let her tell it. I'm pretty sure she she she, she thinks so. Uh, I hope so. But we're gonna try to help make her and you all and you all's children safer today. Okay. Um, Omaniki is not here, but we all know Omaniki will be here, of course. You know, uh, Omaniki is Omaniki is Yoruba for late, so, <laughs> so she'll be she'll be late. She's she true to her name. Uh, that's oh, not, so not what Omaniki means. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you hear Omi in the in the Yoruba language, it means uh, bring yourself over a little bit. It means yeah. Water. So yeah, Omi Tutu, that's cool water, right? Tutu is cool. So Omi Tutu is cool water. Uh, uh, I, I know. Yes. Omi Lade, uh, the priest, I believe it's the priest of Arshun Kams, so the priest of Olokunka. So Omi deals with any of the water deities. So Omi is Arshun. It's uh, Olokun, which is deals directly with Ominiki. Olokun uh, and Yemoja. Okay. Uh, so when you hear it, it, it could, that person with an Omi name could be either one of those. Okay. Uh, his name is Omitola. That's uh, water brings wealth. So it's Ashim brings wealth. Yemoja brings wealth. Well, right. Peace, Hello, much more. up in here early. We appreciate you. Oh, yeah, peace. I mean, peace. now on those things because people are gonna say, I just do whatever I want to do. No, no, I got them. If, if, if you're if you're serious about okay, I'm, I'm, I'm being happy, then be serious about the cultures that you're messing with. Don't just make up shit. If there's too much information out here, you just be making up shit. Okay, so like when um. Excuse me. <laughs> I, know, I don't know what's going on. You're watching uh, Spider Man cartoon. Um, what color it had? It, it, you know, I want you to watch that cartoon. When I knew somebody, and he, he may be watching the show, I really don't care, but he's incorrect. He named his child Olokun. I mean, you could do that. If you, could, if, if you don't know no better, or you don't profess to be practicing Ifa. Right. I mean, if, do it. I, I don't care. Name the child Ogun. Who? <laughs> but he named his child Olokun. I said, why do you have Olokun uh, tattooed on your arm? That's my child's name. Oh. I said, okay. Well, you know, probably you need to be like, you jacked up when you did that. Olokun is a god. You're a god. But it's a force of nature. Now, if you want to, I mean, people may say, I want to name my child the wind. I want to name my child Earthquake. Win, Win Jones. Win Jones. <laughs> Earthquake Robinson. I mean, if you want to do that, do it. But it sounds just as ignorant as mm -hmm. that. You know. Uh, fire, fire, fire Jameson. <laughs> this shit sounds crazy. But, hey, if you want to do that, do it. But it sounds just as ridiculous. You just don't know that because you don't know the Yoruba language. So to you, it just sounds African. It's just African. I just, name a child Olokun. Name Ongu. Name him Arshon. No, 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 no. That is how we do it. And doing that is ignorant because people, you know, they name a girl Arshon. You ain't going to name a boy Arshon. But it's plenty Arshon men. Because Arshon is a force of nature. So you have men who their Orisha, and that means the, the Orisha that you display the great characteristics, your personality, 
uh, you get blessings from all that. That is all shown. There was a brother and sister married, and he, you know, telling his wife she all shown, and you know, he all go, I'm all gone, uh, so and so, so and so. Uh, divine for both of them, she's all gone, and he's all shown. And you had to wrestle with that. All dudes want to be all gone. You're not. All of you are not. Don't step in this lane right here unless you really are for real. It's, 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 that's, that's, and I, I just had to be serious about that because when everybody talk about Ogun, we work with Ogun every day. I see these old shook, shaking, quaking clown claim to be Ogun or just anything Ogun. You spank your child, that's Ogun. He Ogun. And no, they ain't got nothing to do with Ogun. Or any other reason, what, 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 what force of nature deals with spanking your child? I ain't saying don't spank your child. I'm saying what force of nature deals with that? Get out of here. Peace, folks. Peace. Peace. It's like people saying, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the Arisha Captain Crunch cereal. <laughs> which, which, which one? Which one? Which one deals with Captain Crunch cereal? <laughs> or, 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 or Toasty Olds, whatever the hell them cereals are on East cereal, right? The Arisha Wheat. The Arisha Wheat. <laughs> If that's wheat you eat. It ain't wheat, it's cardboard. It's right. cardboard. Greetings, greetings, greetings. greetings. So, he's, family. Family. he's here. He just dealt with the, the origin of your name, what your name means, brother. Yo. Oh, wow. <laughs> Obaniki means late. Cardboard. Oh, uh, late. <laughs> Not cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> so we just, you know, that, that's my soapbox about names. Uh, C Flux, Flux Wonder Bat. Mm -hmm. Binkus Rex, he just got all of them. The longest he got the longest that <laughs> ever. Uh, that is Amosun, uh, and his name, Amosun. Aaron Aaron, right? Aaron Aaron, the laughing elephant. Mm -hmm. And see, people, why, why would you call yourself that? Because that's meaningful. It's meaningful. It's dealing with, it's, it's telling you uh, about two Orisha right there. If you know. So, so. Our names is, is important to be meaningful with the name, not to just say anything willy nilly. I'm hot dog swan. Taquan Ladarius. Um, wait. Now, Taquan Ladarius, that, that would tell me he does Taekwondo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's his name, Taquan. Vicariously. <laughs> Vicariously. Right. If you, don't, if you don't know it, I've been good with kicks and just don't even know why. Because his parents I'm glad we, we started getting out of that. We, I mean, we, we phasing out of that. Well, slowly. Well, when I first moved here in Atlanta, you all, they give people fake Greek names. This the first was that Avius, those names. Zanquavius, Cetavius. Stop, stop. Hey, what the stop, hell is this? Stop, My stop, nephew stop, stop. is Jaquavius. <laughs> Quick. You didn't know that was his name? Yes. Is, oh, fake. Do we have Aquavius down? What is the yeah, name? Yeah, Avius. Because <laughs> they try, I'm like, why they trying to be Greek down here? I don't know. That is Greek. That's trying to be Greek. It's, it's Greek. -ish. Just like Mother trying to be French. I knew a dude. <laughs> oh, boy, I don't he know got mad. He worked it. with my sister. My sister took me to work with her. My older sister, Phyllis, right? <laughs> took me to work. I was eight. And uh, my, my, my sister said, this is my friend. Uh, so and so, this is my friend. So -so. And, and she set it up. Because she knows. She, knew she, do. she said, this is my friend, Booyah Bay. <laughs> I said, Booyah Bay is a soup. <laughs> and he got pissed. He said, little boy, that's disrespectful. I said, no, disrespect your parents' name. I was eight. I said, disrespect your parents' name to Booyah Wow. Mm -hmm. I think that's better than, I'm saying, everybody no. put their people on, but I got to put one of my friends on black. Because I know he don't watch the show. So <laughs> I'm going to talk you about gonna, you. you comment in there. I'm going to keep talking to you. <laughs> I got a friend that, I mean, he gets met. He named his daughter Aria. Ain't nothing wrong with that. What he don't know what Aria means. You know why he named her Aria. You know why he named her Aria. Why? Because of music. From Game of Thrones. Oh. No, so she's what? she's little. Or she's she's a bit, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's uh, another story. Aria is a music term. Yeah, it's right? a music. That's yeah. I thought he was using that for. It's my cousin. Maybe he looked it up. Really? Looked it she up. Probably got me. I, I, look, I don't know what they were talking about before I came. Okay. <laughs> Let me just put this out there. I got love for all my folks. I don't care what, what kind of name somebody gave you. That is not your fault. 
The only issue I had was this girl who I went to college with named Jobina. Whoa! She was really. I got a friend named Jobina. That, that, Get out of here! Yes, for those real. Are, that's, those are Joe Biden's children. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 what that is. I I just went home and had a went to her birthday party. She threw for her, her husband, I think. Joe maybe Bina. maybe it's because maybe it comes from Joe. Joe like Bina T, the, T Moni. What was was her dad's name? Joe. Joe Bina T Moni. I don't know. T Moni. Her, her dad was really? my coach. T Moni. Right. Her dad was my coach. Shout out to Mike T Moni, Tony T Moni, the T Moni. Hey, they don't play you. Not no T Moni. Not you play nobody. Why you have the name T Moni? That's too close with that T money, man. We don't know why I would have to call myself T money. I think people just were trying to be creative in a way. I would say my my given name, like it sounds a lot like other names, and I've actually heard people with the same name, but my mother came up with it with a completely different way than most people do. LaQuisha. Yeah, exactly. Equatia, Equatia, <laughs> Oh, that, that, that Greek, <laughs> Greek. That's what that is. The, the male is Equatia. She's Equatia. <laughs> Greek, and it means of the water. <laughs> Call me Nikki. Bro. You know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. See, so but it's like now. Okay, now my, my wife's middle thing. name is Lachey. So Lachey, which is funny, that is one of the. Appellations or names of Obatala, which is one of her Orisha. Mm-hmm. They normally have two. So mm-hmm. his name is Alaba Lache. I heard that name. And so that that is so her name is Lache. Alaba Lache. That's just one of Obatala's names. Wow, that would be true. I'm not bullshit. Uh reminds me of native first nation names. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have a I have a I have a, I have a, I have a native name. The tables are the tables are cousins. A washada. A washada. I don't mind. Really? But you know the way I got that name? Uh and, and we I do have name, unlike most black people who claim it, our family never claimed it. We actually do have Native American ancestry. But um uh, a dream, a Native American came to me in the dream. And uh he kept saying, you know, now I said, why you keep calling me that? He said, because that's your name. Mm. A washada. So I was talking to another student Mumi about it, who's into Native American things. And, I can't uh, we, 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 we researched and looked it up, and it means war chief in uh, I'm trying to remember what you uh, Choctaw. Yeah, I think I have a Choctaw name, but I, I don't know. Uh, I can't pronounce it because they split the name. It's like some of the names are like three, like one, two letters, three letters, and four letters. With a common American pronounce. Well, when I found it, it's not sp- spelled like how English was spelled, Washada. No, yeah, yeah, the spelling goes with Right, it's nothing, nothing like that. That's right. another thing that throw you off too. If you don't if you don't understand this, the way it's pronounced by looking at it, you're not gonna get it by just looking at right. it, you never pronounce native names. And just mm-hmm. just so you know those names like Running Elk, Walks by a Woman, that kind of stuff, those are English translations that get close but nowhere near yeah, that's another thing. same very, same way very, very so true. Yoruba names are, are, are and most african names period, are so deep the name my type my name is not balogun my title is balogun okay everybody just calls me that right my, i have two titles oga and balogun but besides father but, but um, balogun is leader in war War chief, but it means a lot more than that. Even words like Abba, Abba, people said just say king, but it's deeper than just a king. A king to the Yoruba isn't just somebody who was chosen from birthright. That's usually right. not how the people choose the king. And then that king has to prove himself through different rites of passage. That he's going to be worthy to be that king, and then he receives certain initiations that make sure he's able to lead well, right? So it's a spiritual and physical thing. So it's a theological as well as a layman position. You're both. 
it's deeper than what just came from England. Right. Someone to, to rule over you. and Right. It's much deeper than that. In fact, if, if, if uh, Abba, when, when he gets up in the morning, his wife or wives have to put his helmet on his head. You don't see his face. He puts the, his, his crown and the, the bees come down and veil his face, right? If they don't put the crown on in the morning, he can't leave the palace. So where's the full control at? Right. Because if he's not doing what he needs to do, they ain't putting that crown on his head. So he doesn't need the power. So that kind of stuff has to be understood. Right. There's checks and balances and it has to be understood. But the people would see those checks and balances like the Europeans saw, they know what the fuck they were looking at. And, and they disrespectful anyway. So uh, was it Cecil Rhodes? Told the king of Ghana, the, the, the Nana of Ghana, that he was going to fart on the stool if he didn't let him sit on the stool. I, I want to, I got to research and get the right person. I, I, I want to say Cecil B. Rhodes, but he said, no. He said, well, if you don't let me sit, I'm going to fart on you. He said, if you fart on this stool, I will kill you and all your people. He thought he was talking to a punk. In his own country. If you disrespect my well, but there was some who was it that when when the king died, he had himself buried on top of this white man, had himself buried on top of this African game? Oh my goodness, I, I forgot. I forgot about I that. I mean, I forgot that fool right now should be dug up, it, pissed on, it, and set on fire. I forgot in why, public. Why would you do that? That was yeah, I forgot that happened. Dig his ass up. Piss all over his bones, put acid on him, or whatever you gotta do to burn that job. Excuse me. I was reading my manifesto. What's, what is that? Our manifesto said Booyah Base is from New Orleans. Right. <laughs> exactly. Booyah Base is from New Orleans. New Orleans. That's right. A good one. <laughs> exactly. Now, he ain't. He's from Chicago, but. That's the origin of the name. Right, of course. <laughs> Not the names of persons. That's yeah. the, the name of the meal. That was the moral of that story kids. was if you plan on having children, if your children are planning on having children, let's have meaningful names that mean something. Even if it's not, it don't have to be African or Native American. Um, I don't I don't particularly like my first name, my mom, my mother in law, <laughs> not mother in law, what's it called? Godmother. They don't have no more to be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My godmother yes. named me my me Edwin. Makes not like it going up. Um, it turns out it's the and it's funny it's the king of currency. Now I tell you this, <laughs> the, uh, prince of currency, the saint of currency. So if you have if, if you have you <laughs> said if you had a grandmother named Fredonia, a Ferdinand or something, mm -hmm. right? You're not black, but we do it. Uh, so her name's Ferdinand right? Well. If she said, I always want my baby to have, you know, the name or divination is done, baby born. We, we, we do, you know, uh, we do a S and Taye, we're stepping into the world where you get the baby's name and then, you know, mm -hmm. uh, missions in life. And, well, and Ferdinand Lerlonia says, you're, you're, you're all right. You have a hot name, uh, Ferdinand Lerlonia? Mm -hmm. like, yeah, she's speaking and she wants the baby to have that name too. Get that baby the name. Oh, I mean, you ain't going to get it. Ain't it. got no meaning. It don't matter. That don't but matter. it has a meaning to your family. Right. right. That got right. power there. So right. So you they, they take that name as don't give them the first name with that. Right. You give them one of the middle names. So Oluade, my son, has the name Adam as his middle name. So he's Oluade Adam. So that's how okay. you keep the peace. And so, right. So that's my father's name, my government name, which I don't really wear. My father's name and my grandfather's name, it, we all had it. Mm. So he has that name. He was not going to be Adam before, but he's in the middle. There's a bunch of Edwins on my dad's side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. so, I guess since everyone's giving up their name, uh, <laughs> my name is not La Laquavia. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, that's what I thought it was. I was like, I'm rocking with it. You didn't let me call you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rocking with uh, it. My name is Shanita. 
and well, um, that. were by my name that my mother gave me and she needed. And the way that she came up with it was she had a. She um, needed a name. <laughs> so disrespectful. Wait until I finish telling my story and you will see how disrespectful oh, that was. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> my mother had uh, three siblings uh, two brothers and oh, one. Goodness. One uh, sister who did not survive, uh, she she died as an infant, and her name was Sharon. And my mother's middle name is Danita, ah. so she took Sharon and Danita and made Shanita. Now I have met I met lots of Shanitas. I had several playmates named Shanita when I was young. None of us spelled our name the same, but you know I, I've met tons of Shanitas even 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 as an adult. I've met you know other Shanitas. But that's how my mother arrived at my name. Now, my daughter, the way she got her name, so she has two two names. Right? Ori Yemi. I I was working doing work with my Ori, my head. Must be we deal with the Ori before I didn't work my head. And then uh I was doing work and somebody rang the doorbell and I opened the door, dude had me a thing of money. I said, yay, me! So, Ori, yay, me. <laughs> that's, how, that's how that day came around. No, no. Uh, <laughs> so, Ori, we say yay, me. His it's, full name is Ori, yay, me. So, Ori, yay, me, my head befits me. Okay. So, now, it was funny. There's, her godmother's name is, one of her names is Ori, Yomi. We had a disagreement. So, Ori, Yomi said, well, we got the same name. I said, you do not have the same name. Oriyemi and Oriyomi are not the same. She said, well, just one letter difference. I said, no, it's, you know, it's different. I said, Oriyomi means my head benefits me. So she said, benefit. I'm, I'm telling you this because you can know my personality from this. She mm -hmm. said, my head, I said, that means my head benefits me. She said, benefits, befits, same thing. I said, absolutely not. Befits means this is absolutely me. This fits me. This it befits me, right? Mm -hmm. Benefits means I get fortunes from it, blessings from right. that. That's completely different. She said, no, that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It was pouring down rain. Mm -hmm. I drove an hour and a half to the library. <laughs> went to went to the Oxford Dictionary. Yeah, poor group. She well, I she wouldn't I showed her on, on a line actually, and she's like, that that's the internet. <laughs> okay, I drove an hour and a half to the library. They had the Oxford Dictionary. I said, I can't copy because she'll say I bullshit. <laughs> so I accidentally dropped the book and the, the page with the name Benefits and it, it, it tore. <laughs> and I didn't want to put it back in there and tore it. So I, I put that in my pocket, <laughs> closed the book, left, came, came home, dropped that mug. Boom! <laughs> now I said, I would have to drive back too. Boom! Dropped it. I just want to say you forget you told this stories about how you got books before, so you already. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't get the whole book. Just a page, right. and I just dropped that on, and she and looked. the little alarm tag. You literally the 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 library, library. especially uh, especially a reference book like that, right? So she looked, and she said, "Oh, can you write?" And I just. <laughs> walk off. And, and as I'm walking off, y'all are gonna say, I told you what he was gonna do. She probably said, he's leaving that because I said, I'll be back. She's like, he's leaving to get information. I, I, I can't, funny. I cannot, and that was drilled in me by my sisters. And I, I was older when I realized they would say something, and I'd be like, no, it's so-and-so. And it'll be seem so obvious to me as a little boy. No, it's so-and-so, and I would go. Through all these encyclopedias, researching and show them right. They were training me to be that way. Mm -hmm. but I, I, I was about thirty when I realized that. I was like, oh, okay. They were tricking me to be a person that's researching, and and so that's just in me. I, you cannot sit up here and challenge me, and I know I'm right on something. I'm not gonna go. I'll go to the ends of the goddamn earth to prove it. And if I'm wrong, I'll be the first to tell you I'm wrong. But I learned something. I, I travel. And, and, and learn. I'd be like pissed at the goddamn and I traveled but you know hours to get this and I'm wrong, but I learned from it. I manifesto is on fire today. <laughs> <laughs> he said my head is too big for me. What's the name for that? <laughs> my head's too oh, there's Ori Toby. 
Oh wow. Ori Toby, but not too big for me. Ori Toby me, but Ori Toby is Ori Toby. big head. And when I say big, I mean big ass head. Y'all, you know, you you heard uh Yakub the big head scientist. When you got him beat, mm-hmm. you Ori Toby, your head is big out of mud. So that's interesting. Remember the, the movie Toby wasn't the guy Toby? Toby? That yeah. was Roots. No, I'm thinking of the, the- Toby. <laughs> not totally. Oh, what was his name? What was his name? What was his name? Toby? I don't know. You know Mask? Or yeah, Mask. I don't. I could never watch that movie. No, he was. So he was. He was. No, he's speaking Shakespeare. He's saying two B. <laughs> that, that, that's that one. It's not Toby. Two B or not two B. Lord have mercy. Now, nah, so my head is too big for me. What's his name for that? Oh, too big for me though. For me, I'll just go with Ori Toby so that the world knows you has got a big ass head like that. That's all, yeah, and it's cool. That. I mean, I got, I hope you ain't breaking on me because I, I do have a big head. We yeah. all got big that's heads, that's, that's um very common, especially in people who do uh like newscasting stuff like that. Uh, Actors have, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah Tyrese head, it's easy he, to Tyrese look like a newborn see. baby, his head's so big, <laughs> he's short too, and his head is huge. It's shout like, out to it's like this. Shout out to everybody with children that are or grandchildren that are going to a prom today. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, shout right, out to, right. to, to uh, o- Ogun Baby. Ogun his daughter. My daughter prom day. It's, it's not her real prom, which is next year when she in the you know, senior. Yeah, this don't is, do that. Don't demean the prom. You don't have to say that. I'm not. I, I told her, like, look, don't no, I didn't go to junior prom. I went to. Well, see, the way they do it now is like. I went, it's the same prom. It's just the 11th graders can go. You know what I'm saying? So they don't have like a separate prom. So for me, I went my 11th and 12th grade year, but the 11th grade year don't feel the same. It's just like a sock hop. Right. I'm like, I was like, yo, this is your field research year to go. You can go, you don't have to have a date, you know, go with your home girls or whatever. And then you feel comfortable next year, you know how to set up, you know what you need to do and everything. So she go, that's what she's doing. She's going with a group of her best friends. And um you know, so I gotta we're gonna we're gonna make this a very good show and then I'm gonna rush to her so I can <laughs> take look, pictures take pictures and cry and all this oh, foolishness. Oh. Now uh I, I said it's like a sock hop. If you don't know what a sock hop is, oh. sock hops are old parties in the gym. They the schools didn't want you to tear their gym up with shoes, so they made you wear socks. Exactly. And so you you know, like and they kept the name dancing. even when they changed Change it. it right. So it's a sock that's hop. When, that's, when, that's when they had junior high schools instead of middle schools and they had dances. Y'all yes. know about dancing. They, we, dances in in Chicago, crazy, they what? still don't have middle schools. Wow. It's elementary school. They, they had two junior high schools they got rid of. So it's elementary school and high school. Mm. And, you know, people like me, I went to elementary school within the high school. I mean, if that's the same, that's the, that's the junior problem. So junior problem is the juniors going to the same problem. They just call it the junior problem. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't because I never went to the junior problem. Eugene Mason says she's doing recon. Who? Reconnaissance. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Reconnaissance. No, him. He he knows knows my is recon. And that's, that's what my daughter doing, too. The same thing. I, but, yeah, I definitely, I was like, look, I'm making me a chaperone. And I'm checking where she said she spend the night. All, all our friends, we spend the night at so and so. I will be calling. Put me on speakerphone. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be fooling. I did. I don't do that. I'll be like, this be She's like, Dad. Then I don't say that. I mean, I'm just kidding. But I just keep on her toes. She never know when I'm going. Like, let me speak to somebody. Let me speak to. But what you do if she say I'm going to Jenny's? And you think she at John's? Mm. You say, well. I'm gonna be setting a bomb at John's. <laughs> <laughs> so she better not be there. She no. better be at Jenny. That's how I do it. <laughs> and then you just blow John's house off the foundation. Oh. I'm just joking, y'all. Oh, I manifest though. You sound like you were you had you scarred by that. Driver. Wait a minute, your driver was in eighth grade? Dinner. Damn. Dinner. Yeah, you oh, well, you know I'm old. I can't see this. We had every dinner dance. I never heard of a dinner. Dance. Not and and not and oh, middle, middle school, school prom. prom. I couldn't go. I was on punishment. Oh no! <laughs> let me talk to I, I let me talk to, to your family, man. Let me. So we're changing. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do a warrior class because warrior class. We're gonna do a warrior class prom. Hmm. That'd be tough. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be dope if we all come dressed up and die. Yeah, the you, first you know thing that the African Center schools here do, do uh, prom. Huh? The African Center schools here do have a prom. What do they call it? Like Ubuntu? Look! Why? Why? Hey, I'm giving them some flavors too. They, they want to be African. It probably is. Call it probably is. See? There you go. You know, another thing I want to say to y'all, man, real quick before we get into it. Don't get caught up in these titles, man, these these, these names. Um, whatever you call yourself, you know, I, I, I see so much separation about this um, foundational. For black Americans? Americans so, versus. Not so, with so, uh, 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 ADOS. Yes, yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm seeing so, so much of that. That ADOS, with so. What is so? ADOS is African. What the hell does it mean? I forgot. But something descendants of slaves. Of slaves, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. American. American descendants yeah, of slaves. They wouldn't yes. put African in. Yeah, it. American right. descendants of slaves. Soda is solidarity of displaced Africans. Hmm. Okay. I, I believe that was came up with by Dr. Jared Ball. So. Oh, okay. Uh, that's the only reason why we're playing with man. <laughs> yeah. so. I don't know. I just I just see a lot of that. You got these. So even the smartest, um, the most intelligent uh, oh. people that I've seen on IG that talk about us being Native Americans versus being African. Oh, diaspora, aspirin. Uh, oh yes, okay, okay. Okay. Cool. Even the most intelligent IG um, people I've seen that I, I follow them on social media that speak about being. Uh, indigenous natives of America and not being African, right? Even the most intelligent people will tell you that, and they put it on their page, there's no, they don't have any proof of either that's substantial that they can show you, besides the, what they have personally, your own records and word of mouth that each person may have, that might be what tribal they, or family. What they feel. Right, but other than what they feel, Nobody can definitely say here. Here's the here's the paperwork. Here's the map. Here's so and so that went to so and so. I haven't met anybody yet, so there's no reason to be so starch in your position and pray for your ways to be open, man. That's all I'm saying. Just have an open mind about things. Uh, we all are the melanated folks. So when you start talking about, I used to trip on how Dominicans back in the days used to be like they they did not like black people. I didn't know that until I was New York. Black, black, not, they was real. I'm not black. But even Dominicans are like, come on, man. We all, you know, it's all the same thing. Now, like, even Dominicans come around. Now, you Negroes want to argue about whether you Pan African, whether you African, whether you Indigenous, whether you Native. Man, come on, man. It's just, just chill on that a little bit. And, and so, relax a little bit. Please. We had a student that was a Hebrew Israelite. Training was for a while. He gets his folks on the line, you know, to talk with me. Which I guess he said to you know, set up some training for them. Right. Um, these dudes talking to me said, "Man, you know, uh, the brother showed us videos of you, and he speaks so high of you. you. You're great, but from what we see, man, and we talk to people, they say you're great. Only thing wrong, man, is you know, you call your art African. I said, I call my art African. I ain't make this up." That's exactly how I said it. Because I know we, we it's gone left how now. You, so. How you needed to say right, this. Right, I ain't make this up. <clears throat> and dude said, what? I said, you heard me. What's fuck wrong with y'all calling me? And you you want me to teach you something, but don't call it what it is? I said, get the fuck out of here with this, man. And so I got off the phone. And the brother called me and said, I'm sorry they acted like that. So and so, you know, yeah. they, they, they'll come around. I said, they don't have to. I ain't got time for that, that shit. I don't have time for that shit. They need me to teach them something. So don't come to be disrespectful because you believe a certain believe what you believe. Right. God damn it, shut your mouth. Right. Shut your mouth and learn. I'm not gonna walk into their place if they can teach me something and disrespect them. In fact, I used to teach at a place that was owned by his brother Nasi. Nasi was never like that. He, 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 was like, right, exactly. some, some, some. he was never like that. He's a bad dude. He's a dude. If you if you ever watched them doggone debates that you used to have, he is, slayed Sarah Sumseti. He bodied Sarah oh, Sumseti. Well, he was so he's well studied. His father was, you know, and then he was never like that with us. Yeah, 
So I, I, I don't. I don't of insecurity. And put all his children training with me, you know, and, and everything. Right. So yeah, of course. Right. That those folks were just insecure. Mm-hmm. You're talking all this time. Get that shit yeah, out of here, man. Right. Insecure, unstable. I don't know what it is, but like, I just don't. I know it's folks that let titles detour them from doing certain things, from moving certain ways. It's folks that. It's folks that want to, uh, like Bob said, they it's people that actually want to train with us. They want to align themselves with us, but feel they can't because the name the African on it. They really are being held up with that. And um, I had a, I had a, I had a brother tell me one time. Right there. That's man, I was, he said, he said, you said, you know, you'll make even more money. Now in Chicago, I, I was doing pretty well, but when I came down here, she must scared of Africa. Scared of. But even though it's claiming to be, but they like it on the outside, right? The show is performative. <laughs> but he told me, you know, you make more money. Just call what you do, hot keto. I said, are you out your goddamn mind? Out your hot keto. He thought he didn't help him. Are you out your mind? Hey, fools always think it. I'm not. I'm like, hey, I got a homeboy that said, yo, when I had the restaurant, man, where are you gonna put some white pictures of white folks? <laughs> I swear to God, this is my best CD I'm talking about. It's my all he was I, I laughed and he was not fucking laughing. <laughs> like, excuse me, man. like the, what you talking about, man? Why you why you being for like you, you gonna have to put some white folks up there? You have, have, to, have to. to. You got to. <laughs> no, not, this ain't no joke. This is crazy. And I, of course, I feel like that on this. I'm like, man, we feel the break character. He said, like. We never got to this place before, so I, I never thought that I never knew this was gonna come out of this dude. Like we been in the street together. Like, what are you talking about? We you never talk about white people like this before. Why are you saying this? <laughs> Crazy people. My brother told me one time, he said, you know, we can't be successful without white folks. And he was dead as oh serious. yeah, maybe you're serious. Yeah, that's, no, that's I, I said, and I and I said to him just like this. I said, you are out your rabbit ass mind. I said, white folks, they, they can do all kinds of stuff without us. Oh my god, we can't be successful without them. Man, you sound like an old coon. Maybe get you some tap dance shoes and I was like, you crazy in the mud. And you know, we my reaction to it, he ended up laughing, we, we ended up laughing about the thing. But he was always he was serious. That, that would come up every so often. He would bring up that. Yeah. A white girl, he looked, white girl got big cash. See, ain't nobody got cast like a white woman. Are you serious? Nigga, I'm sorry. Yeah. He was. He was. He was. I don't, he was even, gone, I don't even. Um. I don't even see why people like posting the the history of like slavery where they go back to white people was the white woman was the first slave and was, well, you, so you right. want to try right. that? I don't right. get the. First of all, I don't, I don't like. I don't want to mention that because white folks love to be like, see, we had, and it's a totally yeah. different type of slavery. Or, or, or black people enslaved us in Egypt. Right. That's the only time they, they, they'll say Egyptians are black. Because they could claim something dead. Right. They, was dead. <laughs> they want to claim that they was even there. Right, and they weren't even dead. Right, exactly. So, like, yo, it, we got to just, man, just, let's just get there. That's all I can say. Also, uh-huh. Yes, because yeah. it is a sickness. Even, yeah. even you make a, a, a movie, with, I, I read, I'm tired of slave films. But you make a slave film and about slaves being liberated, and every time it's going to be a white man in there helping liberate. Oh, you, yeah. can't, you can't make one just, any, just black folks. Not helping, but instrumental in what right, happened. Right. He's the keyhole. Even, even Django. Django couldn't fight his way out of wet paper bag until, until the white man. When the white man, when they when they when they train, when they they, they, they learn, when he trained to shoot and all that, they, they missed that montage. No, they did show when they trained when he trained to shoot and stuff. But that's not fight though, when he's trained mm-hmm. to shoot. Yeah, he trained a little mm-hmm. quick little shoot. Really? He civilized the he black trained, man. He trained him quick, so he was able to shoot like that. I mean, he shoot. <laughs> he can make a a, a a forty-one caliber. Those those, those six shooters from the West, forty-one caliber. Yeah, that's 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 they he shot this woman and blew her out the room. <laughs> hey, remember that? that shit was I love that. So, shit. so, wow, so that, that white man crazy. really trained him. He was talented. I love that. <laughs> he was that Ooh. one in ten thousand, like they said, Ooh. and the white yeah. man just brought it out of exactly. him. Exactly. Well, thank, thank goodness for that. Hey, white man. Hey, thank you, bro. For those, <laughs> for those of y'all who um, we about to get into it. Uh, for those of y'all who watch Snowfall or who don't, you want a gratifying scene just for Black people. The last episode, I not, uh, I guess it's a spoiler. It, was, it wasn't it wasn't fully gratifying to me because old girl went on to the Scout. Oh, 
like that. Oh, you seen Snowfall? Of course, I've seen every episode. Okay, so I'm just talking about when they when they got got rid of him. Yeah, I, I mean, I want that to happen. Well, you know, it's based off of a true story. Right, right, so right. It could, but who I wanted somebody else to get his ass. Yeah, I didn't Not want that. No, I didn't want that to happen. And like and that. and she got him before he sent that the code where they yeah, get his ass. Yeah. I was just so. But I, I know the, myself the, the, I was the, so, the reason why that person did that because he said he could live without them. Right, right, so she right. Said, okay, well, after you then, right. money that important? Yeah, you was doing your money. He, he, he was ridiculous. But, right. but, but and disrespectful because I can't live without my mom. I mean, if she leaves, how about, how about yeah, this? My friend, so my friend that. called me. Excuse me, y'all. Spoiler friend. alert. <laughs> my friend called me and said, <laughs> "Man, <laughs> said, man, damn, but what you did to your mama, man? I don't know what I'd have did to my mama." I said, this is one of my friends said this, right? He said, I don't know what I just. I said, didn't point the cash, boy. I said, well, one thing is, I'm not going to lose all my money and my mom. Like, <laughs> what are you right. talking about? Like, right. what am I going to do to my mama? Like, my money go on. That's what you want to do. He's going to be like, dang, mama. No, I, I say that. I'm going to kill you, mama, because I lost that, That's crazy. So just the thought to even think. I'm, hey, people wild out here, man. People are wild. Hey, brother. <laughs> a student came to me one time. He was concerned. And I told I can bubble off. I said, what he's concerned about, about himself, right? Mm. Well, we were talking about that. He goes into shit that was really concerning. He said, you know, I, I'd be in the kitchen making cake and I got the knife in my hand. I just think, you know, I just stab my mother. So I, I, I looked back and bubble off. So I let him keep on talking. He said, I'll stab mama. He said, and, uh, I think you know the sister, but he said, I stabbed. And then, then he said, you know, sometimes, you know, she'll hug me. I said, I can break her neck right here, you know. And I said, no, hold on, man. We don't, two things we don't talk about. We don't talk about hurting the babies, and we don't talk about killing our mamas, dude. Or daddies. I said, you too outrageous with that. I said, so if you're looking for me to, to give you absolution or, uh, Maybe teach you how to not think that way. I, that's so outside of my thought process. I don't know what to say. I said, all I can do, all I can say is, I want to get the fuck away from you. Just like that. I said, because that, that's outrageous, dude. That's what he said. The only thing, she calls me later and said, you, you found out some things about my son. I would advise you not to tell anybody. I said, wait a minute. You, you calling me. I said, I defended you. I said, you calling me tell, and, and, and threatening me. I said, so, oh, I'm telling the world now. <laughs> and I didn't, but because I'm like, that's, that's that's too much. That's too much for me. It's just too that's icky for me. But I'm mentioning it now without saying names. I've done that because she threatened me. And if you're listening to me, sister, don't never threaten somebody that's trying to help you or your own or your child. So in this, we're talking about is your child safe? And that's why we, that's, this is a good Are you safe? Because the people, you never know and, and, who you around. And, and is your child, so that, so that was a child, it was a man, but that was her child, right? Is your child safe? Was he safe throughout his life? Is it, is, is the lack of safety is what made him think that way. Right. Mm. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, I think that's concerning for, for any parent. I know I think about making sure that I have a good relationship with my son. I know all parents think about that, but yeah, because I mean, yeah, there's some there's some real different type of mentalities out there as far as uh, relationships to mothers. So, you know, I do my best. A story that, that deals with that, and I'm sure some of you have heard it, Woman is out in the forest. She finds a sick snake. She picks up the snake. Mm. She takes it home. She feeds the snake. Mm. You know, she heals his wounds and everything. And, you know, she loving the snake. She, she she gets love for the snake like it's her child. You know, and uh, one day she's holding the snake, and the snake bites the shit out of her. It's, it's venomous, and she's dying. And she's like, Why would you do this to me? I, I love you. I, I, I thought you loved me. And the snake said, well, you knew I was a snake when you brought me home. <laughs> um, okay. uh, South, African, South African story, which they don't consider a story, it's a, it's a folk tale, it's in their liturgy 
for the, their, their history. Zahra Lel was considered the most intelligent person in the world. His, he was born under strange circumstances in a cave, right? His mother, well, there were these birds that were the ko koala, koala birds that would look and, at a child and tell you his destiny. They told her, what is this thing you brought to us? She said, what do you mean, my baby? They said, kill it right now. She said, I'm not killing my child. To kill it. So they're trying to get, she's running with the child. They're scratching her back. They're trying to get to the child. He says, this child got to die. She says, no. And she jumps into a hole, goes into a cave. She raised the baby in the cave. There's an there's a underwater lake with crabs and stuff, and there's fresh water. So she's, you know, they got water. They got food. Mm -hmm. Raises the baby. Sarandell gets older. The mother goes out to get food. She comes back. Zarlet well, found this orb in the in the cave, right? Silver orb. So he's meditating on the orb, praying. And uh, the mother comes back. And she said, well, where'd you get this? He says, I found it in the cave. She said, okay, that's, that's strange. He said, come look closer. She comes over to look closer. He says, look at, look at it. To look, to look at it. A tail comes out, stings in the chest, kills her, sucking her blood out. She said, how could you do this to me? The same thing. I, I loved you. I said, what is this thing you, 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 you mean by love? You never taught me about love. Kills her. He took her blood. He puts that down. He does incantations. It sprouts wings. It gets a, a bird-like form. It lays more eggs. does incantations. They sprout wings. He gets on it, rides it up. This is where they get the whole thing, the, the Green Goblin, too, riding the, the, the thing like that. He rides it up. And he rides throughout with, 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 with his host of, 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 of robotic, basically, uh, birds. And he rides to the koala and kills all the koala birds, goes throughout, and then he teaches. He, he comes out and teaches the people. He begins to teach the people how to use technology so much so how to how to create human beings the people lose the ability to, to reproduce and there's other stories in that but what it's mm -hmm. telling you is he said well, what is this thing you never taught me about love and that's what led him to killing his mother and destroying africa well, well south africa during that time according to their liturgy right he was wow. the most wicked person that lived he got ends up getting destroyed, but that's Zara Lel. Okay. Uh, if you ever want to read about that story, you can read that in Daba My Children by uh, Busumuzu Credo Mutwa. Oh, it's in Daba My Children. Ain't that the guy? In 1954. Didn't he just pass? He passed oh, I think a last year. Yeah. Last year or two years ago, yes. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, that. Credo Mutwa. All right. Um, assistance. Or assistance says real black will show the white daddy behind every single movie. I don't know. Is that something that you're coming up with? Why don't you give us a little bit more information real so we black. can know what real black is? I guess that's a show real will show the white daddy yeah, behind be every show. single movie. Oh, okay. Like a podcast or something. Okay. All right. So we're about to get into it. Um there are many dangers children face. Like, is your child safe? Uh, you decide, and we're going to work on you know, making them safer. So, Jamie is one of my children, right? She was the youngest for 14 years. Uh, now she's got a new title called Big Sister now. She was the youngest, but, but the, <laughs> and she's a good big sister, too. Of course. So, now, out of the dangerous school age you face, two of the most insidious and prevalent are bullying and abduction. There are several dangers that the children face, but these are two of the prevalent, especially when it comes to dealing with us. Right? Bullying exists in many forms. Okay. There's physical bullying, there's pushing, punching, hitting. There's verbal bullying, there's name calling or threats. And then there's psychological bullying, there's spreading rumors or excluding someone from a conversation or activity. That's all forms of bullying. 
Bullying can occur outside of school hours too. So it's not just like at school, outside of school, through emails, text messages, DMs, and even social media posts. Especially these, social media these days. Yes. These exchanges, and it was dangerous through emails. Mm-hmm. So they bullying. Parent, you, you don't know. You may be able to look at your child's right. post, but you right. don't know what's going on in the email. Yeah. 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 These exchanges known as cyberbullying can be ex- particularly hurtful and aggressive, and, and a lot of them lead to suicide. And their harmful effects are often brought back into school the next day. The first step to dealing with bullies is to know how to recognize when your child is being bullied. Okay, so how to recognize bullying is... Um, Typical bullying symptoms include physical complaints such as stomach aches, as well as worries and fears, and a child not wanting to go to school. Now, so some of these things are here. Uh, Are you being bullied? No. It's okay to say it on on, on here. You ain't going to try me like that. All right. So, all right, because Jamie gets, you know, stomach aches sometimes. (laughs) <laughs> uh, sometimes you don't want to go to school so um, you know I just had to ask all right and that's why it's important to I mean we'll talk about it deeper but that's right. why it's important to communicate with your children to know right. if you know how deep it goes but a normal defense to avoid a normal defense is to avoid or withdraw from things that are making them stressed it can be helpful to ask questions and get your children talking about their social situation for instance Find out which friends they're getting along with and which ones they're not. If, a, if you suspect a problem or if your child has vocalized a problem, press for more details. As children get older, they have a significant awareness of peer relationships, so you can be more direct with your questions. When your children talk, really listen to what they share and keep your own emotions in check. Often, parents will get angry or frustrated, but children don't need you to overreact. They need you to listen, reassure, and support them. They need to see you as a stable, strong, they need to see you as, excuse me, stable, strong, and able to help them in any situation. I just want to um, mention that this, this is why it's important, man, to just spend time with your child um, even if you, you know, like me, when you, um, you know, I'm not with my child all the time. So when, when I am, it's important instead of just giving them instructions and, you know, to just observe how they move, get, know how your child moves. And I'm speaking more to fathers who are not at home, you know, um, so because if you don't recognize certain things you don't know your child's temperament like for example i know my child's temperament so when she get in the car in a minute i can tell if she's not her normal energy her normal self mm-hmm. but if you don't know that then that's one you just missed the flag right there mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so stuff like that is important i just want to say now real, I- real quick I mean, the was that these practices of bullying can even happen in the workplace. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, definitely. most definitely. But trustfully, by the time you're an adult, you know how to deal with other adults. Because, but and I mean, that's a, need to have a show. <laughs> yeah, that's funny that because, <laughs> I just know. had the same well, thought. Well, these are the things that we're going to be dealing with. Specific, particularly uh, in the abduction part. Right. And I was going to say, too, be like, uh, you brought up the car. I remember uh, when my son was uh, very small and I was working full time, there was a woman who really was kind of like an auntie to me. You know, she was an uh, elder and she used to talk to me uh, all the time about child rearing. And, uh, you know, I appreciated it, but I, I appreciated the conversation. But I think like I really connected with some of the things that she said once my son started to get older. And one thing she always would stress to me was the car ride. 
Yeah. She was like, especially as a full time, you know, if you're working full time, but you always got to pick your child up. You always got to drop them off. You know, that's that's a very common thing. So she was just always telling me how important it was, the car ride, how you got to talk to, you know, if, if there's something that you're trying to talk to them about, you know, and you really have to make sure that you're taking advantage of, of those car rides. And I know we have, I'm sure, a lot of parents in the in our group here. Um, so uh, you all probably know about that. But if you don't, you know, make sure that you're taking advantage of it. And also talk to young parents that you're around at work and, and different things like that. And, you know, pass that on to them. Because a lot of times people don't think about it, especially when you're young, you know, you don't think about something that, that uh, it doesn't seem as significant. But that's when you see them most of the time, you know, a lot of times um, or during dinner or something like that. But even now, people don't really eat together like that. Well, I was going to say when you go out, you do um, eat together. Right. right that's Instead true. of making it a wee like that type right. of moment. Talk. Uh, and, 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 and you can tell you, when we, we go out to eat, I'm giving them all kinds of stories about my life. That's important. I, I do that on purpose. They need to know. I'm trying to give them lessons through those stories, right? Um, I remember one time I was sitting at home and uh, I said, well, you know, we're just going to have food ordered. We're going to order food. Nobody felt like cooking or nothing. We're going to order food. Uh, they said, hey, can we go? My, my son said, can we go out? I said, we'll just order something. They said, we go out because, uh, you know, we, let's go out because when we go out, you know, you tell us your stories. <laughs> so, I realized, you know, the importance of it, right? That and, and that they wanted to hear them too. So we went out. That is so it's important to share your life with your children, unless your life just so crazy, you're scared that you know they follow and and, and really even if you had a crazy ass life, share with them and, and, and let them know why it's not good to follow in that path. Right. They gotta know you. The reason I think that's really, really important, too, is because once your children get to a certain age, they need to see you as a person and as a parent. They need to know you have, because the parent don't have feelings. The parent just administrates, you know what I'm saying? And disciplines. No, no, no. It's, you know, that you get that, you can feel like that sometimes as a child. You know, some babies, first word they speak is no. Because they've been told no so much right. by their parents. I'm not breaking on the parents. I mean, right. sometimes you're, you're trying to protect the child, right? But just recognize that your parents, right? And because I, you ain't speaking too much except to tell them no. Stop. No. Right. Then between that, you watching Judge Mathis. And they ain't breaking that. My, my wife. My wife's a good mother. She's good with with, with them, right? She watched Judge uh, But she watched shit out of Judge Mathis. <laughs> <laughs> I like Judge Mathis. You watch Judge Mathis and that's ain't no, 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 no. Right, <laughs> you know, goddamn, pause Judge Mathis and teach him or something. You know, I tell you, Judge Mathis, my wife has watched it so much that, and, and this is real, I hate the sound of his voice. <laughs> I can't take it. First of all, he always calling people crackheads. I don't like that. But he sound like an alcoholic. He sound like he's drunk. So how you breaking on somebody else? He always sound drunk. Huh? Every show. Oh, stumbling. Judge Mathis. Bob is not in the expressing his, everyone's his, opinion. We love Judge Mathis. We have more love. We appreciate Absolutely. We know you're a smart supporter. Of Black Power Media. You know you love us out. Black Power Media. Ten cents. If he did, he Black Power Media. We wouldn't know what he said. We just heard him say, "Yeah, Black Power Media." They crack him. I give money, and we help the crackheads. First of all, you help them with some crackheads. The moral of the story is important. To pay attention to your children, to share. Um, and I don't mean, name your child Judge Mathis. <laughs> because black folks start doing that too. <laughs> judge, Judge! What's his middle name, Mathis? Uh, 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 that would not be fine. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, okay, so uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, I date Judge Mathis. Be no, heck no. <laughs> That's going to be your grandson. <laughs> All right, y'all. So, so once you determine your child is being mistreated by their peers, here are the smartest ways uh, to deal with bullying. So, or with bullies. So, 
Uh, if your child is being bullied, it's important that you help them to understand that bullying is never their fault. Uh, bullying is always more about the person who is engaging in the behavior and not the person being targeted. It's not up to the child to prevent their own bullying, but it can be helpful to have a plan in place for how to address it, potentially help stop it from escalating. Here's some suggestions to prevent, I mean, to prepare a toolkit for children to use in tough situations when it can be hard for them to think straight. So one is uh, create a list of responses. And now y'all see why I was saying why um, it's important to be able to, to know your children and their temperament and stuff, because the first thing is being able to realize that something is going on with them. So uh, create a list of responses, all right? Practice phrases your child can use to tell someone to stop bullying, uh, to stop bullying uh, behavior. Uh, this should be simple and direct, but not an antagonistic. So, you know, uh, leave me alone, uh, back off. You know, uh, that wasn't nice. You know what I'm saying? Uh, not, don't do it again. I mean, that's, you're daring someone right now, so that's the to the territory. Uh, your child could eat, uh, could also try, uh, yeah, whatever, and then walk away. The key is that a comeback should be put down, should be a put down, shouldn't be a put down, excuse me, because that aggravates a bully. Uh, says Michelle Borba, ED, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, Ed, D, what's that? Physical? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't see it. Don't worry about that. A PhD. <laughs> Uh, author of the big book of parenting solutions. Okay, role play whatever scenarios. Uh, role playing is a terrific way to build confidence and empower uh, your child, your children. Excuse me, I was the screen down. Your children to deal with uh, challenges. Right. You can role play the uh, the bully while your child practices different responses until you feel confident uh, handling troubled situations. This is important to y'all because uh, children just don't naturally shout out certain things. It's like standing in court and disagreeing with the judge. Like it's hard to do, so you do need to practice that. As you role play, teach your child to speak in a strong, firm voice. Now, with that, when we did the children's self-defense uh, uh, workshop that time, dealing with uh, abduction. Right. Uh, it was, I think it was girl self-defense because it's all mm -hmm. girls, right? Uh, I gave them something to shout. They didn't want to shout it, so I told them, you know, it's important to use your voice. Yeah. Unless somebody quiet your voice, and you know, the parents don't quiet their voice. They have to know they, they, they have a voice, and it's, it's valuable. It needs to be heard, and they have to speak that shit loudly in case somebody is doing something to them or, you know, try to take them somewhere. They, they have to be able to speak up. Yeah, and that's really common, how, you know, telling children that they're too loud and Call why you Use so your loud. inside voice. Yeah, oh, and all that. You like, know what? Sometimes I, they need to be loud. I never was with that. Yeah. I mean, it's a time and a place to be quiet, but if they, if we home and they're playing, why not just the children? I let them play. You know, when we just have to not play. Yeah, first of all, okay, you have a child. That's two or three. You know, it's depending on what kind of noise they're making, too. Yeah, indeed. Because uh, so one time, one time, uh, my middle, this middle four, really, but it's three of them. So it was, it was Bamitale, Ogishina, and uh, Yetunde. They took every pot out of the house, I mean, out, out of the cabinets, about 50 of them. And they oh, God, 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 God. I'm like, what in the put all this up? You know, but when children are in that two to twelve age and you hear a lot of noise, say quiet that down. When they're in the 13 to 18 age, you don't want them to be quiet. No. I'm wrong. Yeah, you're yeah. like, hey, it's too quiet. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. At that point, you're like, hmm, what's going on? You know, I used to give my son pots. Oh, no. That's the, I said, that's why we had such crazy conversations. You know, yeah. especially if I was in the kitchen with cooking, the I would give him a pot and let him beat on it with a spoon or do whatever he wanted to do. Yeah, that's, that's one child. We 
got a bunch of them. That's true, yeah. I ain't and they competing with each other who can beat the lives out. Yeah, I can imagine that would be different, but it was just him. So I gave him a pot, spoon, let him bang some pots together. There you go. Press that. So, all right. So, first, let's create a list of responses, role play, what if scenarios. And the third one is promote positive body language. Uh, by age three, your child is ready to learn tricks that may help them feel more empowered in difficult situations, including when being faced with bullying behavior. Tell your child to practice looking at the color of the friend's eyes and to do the same thing when they're talking to a child who's bothering them, uh, says Dr. Borba. Uh, and I, if I could just interject, um, there's definitely a lot of videos on YouTube that will show you different body language that you can help your child do that helps you feel more confident as opposed to the body language that helps you feel smaller and, you know, less confident. So, and, and they want to appear more confident even than not. Right. To exactly. a bully with us. And, the, and it, if it's, e it's going to be very easy for you to lift your arms up or do something, you know, make yourself bigger to give yourself that feeling, like, yes. rather than you just going in your mind and saying, I'm confident. I'm I'll tell you, like, one, one thing I teach adults when you're faced with a person that's been aggressive to you, okay, you look, don't do not look them in the eye, right? But you look them right here. Yeah. And to, to them, it registers you looking them dead in their eye, but you're not. You're looking at, at them right here, right? Now, if you're in combat, you look at that stern, but you look right here, so they're not freaking you out with their eyes, they're not intimidating you, and it looks like even they're trying to intimidate you with their eyes, it's not working because you're not even looking them in the eye. Right. So they can't tell that. So that's one thing you should always do. Also, looking them right here, you can see their hands, Exactly. You can see their body getting ready to move. Now we go down to the sternum if we're actually engaged in, in a violent encounter because now I can see their feet as well. Right. And that's where it's really good for children because, you know, uh, a bully or something going to be in your face and be doing all this stuff right. when they're talking. Well, if you just pay attention to right here and you're not reacting to all that, one of the things, one of the things that saved me as a child was my look. Was my look in the inside. I mean, oh, God, please. Mm -hmm. Don't hurt me. But inside, but outside, I kept a straight face. <laughs> if, I don't know why or how I did that, but for some reason, that straight face, now, you know what? I'm going to leave you alone. I swear, well, I would hurt your butt. <laughs> and I mean, in, in, in the inside, I'm like, geez, thank you, Lord. <laughs> outside, I'm just keeping the same face. I mean, that's, how, that's where I'm from. Keep the stone face. You know? uh, Eugene Mason says, you only know what you know. I was told to sock a bully in the mouth. But we're going to deal with that, too, in a minute. Bro. Yeah, and, you know, a lot of people were taught things like that. I I um, did not grow up in Chicago, but I did begin my life there. And when we were in Chicago, they used to tell us, get a brick, you know, whatever you had to get to get somebody oh, up off of you. Right That's how it was then. Then I moved to Georgia. Now, in Chicago, I had I was surrounded by family. I got people. We moved to Georgia. Now it's just me and my brother. You know, and we go into school every day. We don't know nobody. We don't have no family here or anything. That changes a child mentally. Then I got into another school for that that I had to go to a lottery for. There I'm now I'm just by myself. I don't have no friends. I'm wearing my brother's clothes to school, you know, like it it changed. Like you learn certain things, but once you change a child's environment enough times, sometimes they can start to feel isolated. So just because you taught your, your child to hit somebody in the mouth or something like that when they were a certain age, don't assume that they're not susceptible to being bullied. Yeah, I mean, you know? yeah, Mia trained pretty much all her life, right? She was on the bus. I don't know if y'all remember this. And the girl had grabbed her, pulled her hair and hit her or whatever. And I told everybody on the thing, now, one of the students, me and her got into a disagreement because she was like, you know, let me know, you know, where is that? I'll come over there and I'll whoop that child's ass. I said, no, we ain't hitting the children. <laughs> you know, I said, I'm not, because that's the case. I'd have jumped on the bus and just knocked the child out. I said, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what needs to happen. Yeah, I said, no, we're not doing that. It, it, that does need to happen, so and so. You just don't know how to handle. I said, God damn it, I'm teaching you how to handle shit. <laughs> so what are you talking about? 
You think I don't know how to handle that? Right. I said, because you're really not observing. Right. I said, I can, I've done things that'll make you have nightmares or throw up. I'm not going to do that to a child. Because now I didn't, I didn't take myself, even though I love my baby, I, I'm not going to take myself out of my character and destroy this child. Even though part of me wants to. Right. But I wasn't even talking that with y'all. You know, part of me wanted to, you know, do oh, things that, but. Not even say that. God damn, we have a responsibility. Like that guy said, for dangerous men and women, we have responsibility. That, that, that's part of it, control. A, a, a mother who can't control themselves, they're weak. Right? So, it's now I wanted it, Hannah. When, when, when I date, mother was bullying him, you know, and, and I told her, you gonna, you got to handle your business eventually if it continues. Right. You got to handle that business. Because even if I did it, they ain't respecting you. Oh, of course not. You got to handle your business, right? So, I did was getting bullied. It, it's, it ended up on Instagram. I don't know who they have posted on Instagram. I, I tried to get it down. They wouldn't take it down. All the other shit they take down. They wouldn't take down children fighting. Well, the boy was, you know, kidding our day. Our day, you know, is covering himself and stuff. And then I did grab the dude. And this Rossi got him. And he picks him up. Boom! Slams him, right? I said, that, this is what we were waiting to happen, right? I, I, I told him, you know what to do. Do it. You have my permission to do it, and I got you. I'll back you. It ain't shit gonna happen to you uh, with being punished or nothing like that from the school. Because then you see me handle them. You're walking out of the school, so you ain't gotta worry about that. Just walk out of that school unscathed, because handle your business, or you're gonna get scathed. Handle your business or don't. You can get your ass whooped or don't. I'm not going to be like, you know, you whoop them, I'm going to whoop you and all that shit. That shit is ridiculous. You tell a child that, but the child wasn't telling you, the child that's bullying him is 6'5". And you well, I, I don't want to get whooped by mama. And go over there and get knocked the hell out, literally. And now you're, oh, Lord. Then the daddy go over there to fight. The child 6'5", daddy get knocked out. And now you're really embarrassed, too. Now you're embarrassed. You shouldn't have told that child, if you don't fight, it, it not, some people, you don't whoop him, I'm going to whoop you. Come on, man. You don't do that. Just say, if you don't protect yourself, people gonna, that person still is going to keep putting their hands on you. Now, you're, you're easy work. Bullies normally take the, and, and we can go back to this. Let me say this real quick. Bullies normally, like any criminal, they will take the, or predator, I should say. They will take the easy route. If they know messing with you, because targets are interchangeable. Mm -hmm. If they know messing with you will send them to the morgue or the hospital, they change to somebody else. And this is what people need to know. And that, that's for you, yay, me. That's for all of us. That's for Okikio as she gets older. That's always going to be my lesson that if a person is bullying you, well, some of you all aren't equipped to teach your children to, to do this, and we're going to deal with that. You have to make sure, you, you have to decide, if I, if I don't do nothing, I'm going to keep getting my ass whooped. I'm going to keep giving up my money. I'm going to keep doing all that. But if I deal with this person, I got to pick them up. Because anybody else looking got to know, I can't shit. It's a price to pay, right? It's a price to pay to mess with her. And so now you're free. You're free. When I was at school, people wouldn't defend themselves against the bullies. I said, God damn, damn that. Until my sister gave me a truth. I started whooping all the bullies' asses. I'm setting them up, catching them walking home. They peaceful walking home, smiling. I'm boom, just hit them and oh, just tapping them up, right? They started noticing them, the crowd was forming. So they try to run the other way because they figured the crowd coming to watch me do something. I used the crowd one time, I said, I'm coming this way. So I, the crowd was going that way. I was like, just sitting them up, waiting for me. So the, the boy ran that way and I caught him. Boom! <laughs> Whooped his behind. People ran down there and I took off, right? So my sister finally told him, she said, Well, so now you're the bully. You're bullying the bullies. <laughs> I said, What? No. Nah. She said, I don't. 
are those bullies human beings or you know they, they aliens or I said they human beings. She said, can they handle you physically? No. Yeah. So now you the bully. And that's what stopped me from doing it. But it also stopped them from messing with both. Right. It worked. That's good. Yeah. You know. They, uh, uh, some situations it's not always physical too. Like I remember having a um being at, you know, the they I wasn't at the popular lunch table, but there was a popular lunch table, and then there was some of the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh this one girl, for some reason, the popular table was full that day, so she had to come sit with us. And she thought she was gonna bring some of that over to our table and start, you know, saying things to us, roasting us. I killed her the mm. whole lunch. Oh, uh, that's no I, way to death, she killed her. You think that's a metaphor, <laughs> but we go back to <laughs> I roasted her the whole because I always had humor. I you know, you gotta have humor if you are in certain situations. So after that, she respected me. We we became friends after that. You know, so it's like I would say to this day, I still consider her a friend. We started riding the bus together. So when you're in those situations, you have to speak up. You have to if it's a physical situation, you can't run away. If it's a situation where someone is saying certain things to you, you have to say something. You know, you have to speak up like that's those are the ways you have to confront it no matter what. That's Sometimes, you know, you can, you can talk to uh, an adult, but not all the time. Right. Exactly. exactly. And now, it's, if it's all day, every day, you're not going to be able to talk to an adult every single time something happens. So, yeah. So where we left off at eye contact, like I was saying, you don't have to look at the eyes, but you want to be right here. And that's a, the reason for it that they're saying here is because if you look it in the eyes, then you're not, your head's not slouched over. Your your posture and your confidence looks a certain way, so you appear a certain way when you look at somebody in their eyes when they're talking. So uh, that's not to say that being confident, excuse me, that's not to say that uh, being confident will necessarily stop a bully. That uh, it's not being confident enough will promote bu- or not being confident enough will promote bullying, but confidence can help your child feel more empowered in a challenging situation. Also. Practice make, uh, making sad, brave, and happy faces and encouraging them to switch to brave if they're being bothered. How you look when you're in an encounter, uh, when you encounter a bully is more important than what you say, than what you say says Dr. Bowman. I now, just spoke on that. And perception precedes action. There you go. So the way somebody sees you, it precedes how they act towards you. Okay. That's always in everything. Your perception precedes every action you make, including watching the show, including like, sharing, and subscribing. So, you know, push that like button. Donating. Donating to who? Judge um, Mathis. Do not donate to Judge Mathis. No. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, Can we, listen, we got to have this man on our side. We <laughs> When's the last time you had a conversation with Judge Mathis? Bobby, you're that you give a bully, huh? When's the last time you had a conversation with Judge Mathis? I'm trying to have a conversation with him right now. <laughs> I'm having a conversation with him right now. I'm speaking like this. Judge Mathis, I'm like, I'm not even my father. I'm Mason said that your Judge Mathis impression sounds like Grady from San Francisco. So I guess. I manifest those not the only one on fire today. That is exactly. That is well, it, it, a friend, of, a friend of mine, every impression he did, some of them were pretty good. I just always say, man, that's not a toucan sound. <laughs> Everything he be doing, you know, Jamaican accent, man, that's not a toucan sound. He doing the accent. He he said, you know, my father was talking to me like this. I said, man, your father sounds like toucan sound. Everything with toucan sound. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> keep an open line. Shady Gray is my boy though. Shady's boy. Keep an open line of communication. Check in with your child, with your uh, kids daily about how things are going in school. Uh, use a calm, friendly tone and create a nurturing climate so they aren't afraid to tell you. If something's wrong, emphasize that they uh, that they're safe. Excuse me, my thing's closing on me. Emphasize that they're safe and well being. That their safety and what did I just skip that page. No, you did. Okay. So, okay. Emphasize emphasize that their safety and well being are important, and that they should always talk 
to an adult about any problems, um, even problems that they think are small ones. And this is why I was saying, you know, um, being around your child and if you're not picking them up, you know, it could be right after they come home from school. But that's really a good time because whatever's going on with them is fresh. Right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And if you wait too long, then they don't want to tell you anyway most of the time. They'll let it go. But a lot of times you catch them where it's fresh and it's they're frustrated about it. So it's on their mind and they'll talk to you about it. So Shout um, out to Eugene Mason. Thank you for, for being our Judge Mathis. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Eugene Mathis. Mason. Build your child's confidence. I, real quick, see, what Bob is doing right now is trying to build my confidence. See, if y'all don't know, <laughs> y'all don't know. I just came. I, I can't ousted myself earlier this week of having dyslexia and how difficult it is, you know, to read and, and do certain things. So of course today I'll get the largest amount. Of stuff to read. I don't thought know I this noticed. Cal- that. You don't know this is calculated. As soon as I see this, I was like, man, Bobby is Bobby. He's gonna be Bobby. No matter what. So this is this is a perfect example of him trying to give me confidence, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> the better your child your child feels about themselves, the less likely the bullying will affect their self-esteem. Encourage hobbies, extracurricular activities, and social situations that bring out the best in your child. Tell your child the unique qualities you, uh, you love about them and reinforce positive behavior that you like to see more. That's in relationships, period. Y'all don't know. He just gave game in that right there. <laughs> um, as parents, we have a uh, tendency to focus on negative situations. Let me tell you, I had to catch myself in the videos. I'm watching videos of me, of Nia, of, excuse me, of Baby training with Baba and, 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 and Akimola. And they're saying, yes, yes, yes. And I ain't saying that. And then when I video by myself and she do something, I'm like, eh, it's all right. I'm being too hard as a father. And I saw her face, and it, it hurt my feelings. I was watching the video at, at the test, and I'm like, do it one time for me. And she did it. And I was like, yeah, it's all right. And I see her, I was like, you know, it, like she did that motion, like, ah, I guess I'm all right. And I, and I just went right over there. I was like, oh, man, I, I could, you can really, it don't take but a, one motion, one word to praise, to, to lift, or to lower your child's esteem. Yeah, and you never so, know. This is the last thing, y'all. Real quick, before I break this, because I'm almost finished my part. This is so important. If you, because you don't know your child's. Sometimes we don't know our child's will, like how strong their will is. I'm gonna give this quick one, real quick. My brother, when he was 16, my oldest brother Terrence, he's very intelligent. But people, a lot of people didn't know that because in school, in high school, he got all E's, but not his first year. I thought he was excellent. No, he went for excellent when he got it. <laughs> the first year, uh, he, he did, he got all A's. Because if my mom told him that she was going to get him a car. Wow. She said, we'll get, you, we'll get you a car if you, you know what I'm saying? Now, of course, my, my dad, they split up. All type of stuff happened. <laughs> but they didn't say nothing to him. So come around, Nick, come around when it's time to get him a car. He didn't sit, the kind of person my brother is, he didn't mention it again. He didn't say, what about the car? When his birthday hit and he didn't get a car, the, year, the next year, year, oh, he wouldn't do no work. Yeah. And the teachers calling my mom like, I don't understand. Like, he was just doing all this stuff, and now he just won't do nothing. My brother never said nothing until he got like 34 years old. Ooh. He was that consistent and said, I don't care. I'm this, like, I could have done it. I'm like, yo, maybe for a couple of weeks, I'm like, yo, I ain't about to flunk. He was determined. He was that. Hey, that's a that's a that's a, a headstrong child. Right? I'm gonna show them, and they didn't have no idea. Hey, you gotta be attentive. You got to know what's going on. And that's no. I'm not putting the blame on anybody in that one. My mom had no idea who she was dealing with at the time. But uh, yes, praise progress. When your child tells you how they defuse a, a harasser, let them know that you're proud of them. If you're witnessing, the, I just skipping the video. Your kids, so oh, I, I, okay, yeah, we we'll talk through it anyway. Okay, okay, um, let them know that you're proud of them. If you witness another child standing up to a bully in the park, point out to your child so they can copy that approach. Above all, emphasize the idea that you, excuse me, keep losing my place, that you, that your child, oh, excuse me, I'm going to emphasize, what well, well, emphasize the idea that your own parent. 
may have told you when you were a kid. Oh, okay, okay, excuse me. May have told you when you were a kid. If your child shows that they can't be bothered, a bully will usually move on. That's what we were talking about. Can't, can't be bothered. They see you a hard target. Thank you. I mean, wow. stuff for the for the donation. Yes, also. thank we you. Really I'm reading the word it. program. That's a word. So when I touch it, sometimes tools come up and I have to reset it. I'm not that slow. So mm -hmm. I'm I, I was also going to say, excuse me, if I know it's your part, but um, it along with what Bile was saying, as far as praising your children, I, I had an experience myself this week with my son because I I think you know a lot of parents probably tend to not overemphasize or not go overboard when it comes to praising your children. But I, my son does homeschool. So he's on the computer and uh, his school is literally online. So he's communicating with other children. He's communicating with teachers and you can hear it all day. So I was uh, making his lunch and I heard him encouraging one of his classmates and telling him mm -hmm. how awesome he was and mm -hmm. you know all these different things that he was saying. It occurred to me that that's how he wants to be praised. You know, that's he's saying the things that he wants to hear from someone else. So, you know, I, I took note of that. And later on in the week when he was telling me about something that he did, he, that he was proud of, I made sure that I lifted him up properly the way that I heard him talking to another child, because that they're letting you know that that's what they want. We can get caught up sometimes in being, you know, parent like, right and, and trying to feeling like we're pushing them to do better by right. holding back that praise when that's not necessarily the case it could it could be for some children but it's not necessarily the case with with most children or most people there's a, a, a balance to it children students so there's a balance to it so if i was always berating y'all that would kill your confidence in what you do. So there has to be a balance. There has to be praise there for what you're all doing. It also has to be berating, but in a more, for me, some things work better for other people, but for me, it's putting humor into it too, <laughs> even if I berate y'all. And then sometimes you just gotta prove a point. So, whether with your children or whoever. So if a student ain't getting it, uh, one time, Bile just wasn't getting the, the, the fall. Side fall. Yeah, side fall. <laughs> I'm like, brother, so we trying all kinds. I'm trying to pull out all the tricks. <laughs> if I say, you know what, you, you have in just a second. Oh, bam, boom, throwing him. Get up, boom, boom, throw him again, throw him again. He got that side fall. <laughs> you know, now, I wouldn't advise you to tell your child, you know, just slap shit out the bully. He'll get it. You know, he slap him. And he ain't get it that day. Slap him again next day. I, I don't know if that's the best, you know. Uh, but sometimes use humor, use, you know, different things with dealing with the bully. And when dealing with your own child, you know, you use, it has to be a balance of things. So they, yes, you should praise your child. And sometimes your child is, is doing something jacked up. Sometimes you don't, don't say nothing or you just, Gently, okay, you gotta do like this. And sometimes, and that comes with experience, you know, right. you gotta you gotta clown them a little bit. Yeah. You know, joke through. You and know, if they trust you, if you have that relationship with them. Right now, if it just you just cause pain. Yeah, you can't really no, you can't. <laughs> Oh right, yo, oh fool. You like a do uh, Yo fool, and 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 your head big as shit. Okay, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, dummy. I mean, that shit be crazy as hell, right? So you have to know how to do it. This is a skill. Yo, this is, this is, right. Yeah, exactly. That's why you don't have Judge Mathis raising your child. We making jokes, right? <laughs> 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 Ready on crack. Ready on crack. Ready on crack. That's it. So let me be serious. <laughs> <right now. laughs> What they just said <laughs> is funny, but this happens, in, this happens in families for real. I've seen this and experienced this for real. So certain, it could be one half of the family. People have different, families have personalities of their own. Yeah, well, absolutely. So some families are picky, really picky. Like family, they pick on each other. Oh. Like it's families like that. You may marry into it. They may be your family. When you get children, 
You it's your job to protect them. A lot of times, right. most times actually, bullies are born in families. Mm-hmm. They, they're, they're trained up that way because yeah, they were bullied. Now, two things as you said, it, it, it reminded me of a conversation me and my wife had. Uh, you know, people don't use the word retardation anymore, but I'm, I'm saying this so you understand what I'm, what, what, you're, you're what I'm saying. Ninety nine percent of all children that are marked as mentally delayed, what people say, retarded. Mm-hmm. It's it's familial. It's called familial retardation. What does that mean, familial? That means it comes from being a family. You're actually not organically delayed. Wow. Your family didn't put enough conversation, communication, and teaching into you. And so you're delayed because of the way your family interacted with you. And that can be easily fixed by people communicating, teaching you, spending time. That that that, that is easily corrected, right? Yeah, now, if somebody's organically, because then the, 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 I think the third one is accidents. Mm-hmm. You know, organic, you were born that way. Right. It, it's not much, but that's only, I think that's only like two, three percent. Two percent. So most of them, 99 percent. Have no appearance or accidents. I mean family or you know, right, it's your family. Activity. And so, so so actually it's, it's less than one percent for the for the others, too, right? That means the family dynamic has to change. Part of what we have to do uh, in teaching our community, working with our communities, is, is teaching that and how to actually be a family that, because it's not just the parents, it's also siblings and things. Oh, Whoever's, yeah, the siblings and, is, you know, you know so we have to, have to do, you know, work with our folks, education across the board. But when I'm talking education, I'm talking political education. That's more important than academic Education, academic education is, is, is important, but political education, we need that. How to be is very important, and that and our children count on it because if, if, if that can be just solved, yes, by acting a certain way, then let's do that. And the thing is, and see, it's, it's, it, this is a touchy what we're talking about because. The people who, the so the, like I know pers- people personally who picket children in their family. Those same people will do anything for that for those children. So it has nothing to do with how they feel, the love and emotions tied to that children. It has everything to do with their program and how they right, were brought right. up and things that happened. Right. Absolutely. And I I see it. I just had to stop because I see it so much. Like it's a it is a real thing, and and that child will be with that family, and not know that that's not normal. Right. And everybody in that family is moving like that until they get out of that situation. Like I will see a child for the first time when I go home, and I see a child I haven't been home in a year. But yet, uh, oh, he done got big. Look how big he is. He done gained all that weight. Look how big he is. Like why are you saying that? Like <laughs> that's the first thing you say. It, it, I'm gonna say this too because. I know they ain't watching. This, this, no, I'm punishing them for that. <laughs> but my daughter's grandma uh, does the same thing with her. Every time somebody says the first thing they tell me, the first thing grandma's like, her, her grandma's like, look how big she done got. And my family didn't know better. You know what I'm saying? And I will say something. I say something, I, but I, I say something to, to, to her grandmother, but I also, I don't say nothing to my daughter. I just later on reinforce it. I don't go up to my daughter and be like, look, what so-and-so said ain't true, blah, 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 blah. I won't do that. I'll just pick my time to say positive things that, that negate what they said. Right. But they it's people that do that, man. And you have to really be aware of that because they're not aware that they move like that. Yeah, and that's the, not a lot of older people that will just say anything to a child. Um, <clears throat> don't you know? Not just thinking that whatever you feel like saying out of your mouth is okay to say to a child. Like they younger folks, do. Young, right. younger, younger, younger adults will do that too. Since we, and since this is about bullying, I'm gonna give this example that my um, my daughter's uh, mother always used to tell me. Um, uh, my daughter's mother um, used to tell me that she regrets 
how she um how she treated her youngest brother so she has three brothers and her youngest brother he's he's kind of overweight now or he has weight issues that he faces and she thinks she's to blame because whenever she wanted to eat something that she knew she wasn't supposed to eat she make him eat it but so they can eat it together right. so she forced us right. on and he'd be like i'm not hungry and she the older sister i don't care eat this and force him to eat when he wasn't hungry and he became overweight and she always talks about that's a form of bullying you're bullying your siblings you have to and sometimes you have to teach your children not to bully the other children and you have to come you have to reason with them and help and help them to see the long-term effects that that could cause because children don't think about long-term ramifications do you take them to a warehouse and be like, you will be doing this when you graduate school? <laughs> it's like something happened in their face. Like, oh my God, you didn't think about that? You just like nobody, children don't think about that. This is what can happen. You know what I'm saying? We have to introduce those things. So now, uh but for times, I, I looked at the time like yeah, excuse we, us, man. This we're is, gonna we're gonna go right into abductions okay. because of the time, right? Uh so you all get it about bullying. Okay. Um with techniques for bullying, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. It's, it's, it takes a, when you're dealing with bullies, sometimes, sometimes you gotta lay hands on them. We're dealing with, in school, there are ways to deal with it. Uh, grappling is a better way. We'll deal with abductions because you can pretty much use some of the same things, right? So in in abductions, this is higher stakes than, than it can be higher stakes than bullying. Right. Bullying has led to, of course, more suicide. When we talk about deaths, well, so teach your children that they can be assertive in order to protect themselves against abduction. Teach them to be smart, strong, and safe. If you don't want to know what abduction is, it's me taking your child from one place to another without your or their permission. Okay, that's an abduction. Children of every age, gender, and race are vulnerable to child abduction. Now, so if a, if a, if a parent kidnaps their child, is that abduction? Yes. And it's legally abduction they cross state lines. Yes. Yeah. And SWAT is coming. <laughs> SWAT is coming. You dump the child, you dump anybody. Right, anybody. right, right. So, yes, yeah, SWAT will come for you. If, if you go too far, too long, FBI come for you. Yeah. Now, children of every age, gender, and race are vulnerable to child abduction. Approximately 204,000 children were abducted this year in family abductions. Family abductions in which a family member was trying to deprive a caretaker of custodial rights. Like a parent takes the child, you know, or a grandparent takes the child because they feel the child, they, their, their child is taking care of their grandbaby. Right. There were approximately 58,000 non-family abductions. So 204,000 family abductions, 58,000 non-family abductions in which the child was forcibly moved or detained for a relatively short period of time, usually in connection with another crime. Mm -hmm. okay. And then 115 of these, the, the, of, of the 58,000, were the most serious and dangerous types of abductions. Those perpetrated by strangers where the child was kept overnight, held for ransom, or killed, murdered. Of those taken, so 115 were kept overnight, held for ransom or murder. Of those taken, period, out of all of them taken, 7% were 0 to 5 years old. 12% were 6 to 11 years old. 22% were 12 to 14 years old. 59% were uh, 15 to 17 years old. That's who's mainly taken, 15 to 17 years, 14 right. years old, okay? Uh, because you know, sex trafficking, okay? Pretty much. 
65 and all of them can get sex trafficked, but the control too um it's easier to control the teenagers versus the young ones. Well, it's easier to manipulate them too. Because the young ones, you can even you could you could threaten them with two, they still cried and hollering, you know what right. I'm saying? You can't, you know what I mean? And and they usually send a friend in right. they think it's a friend for the 15 to 17 year old. Always and, and, and then they end up setting them up, taking them somewhere, and now the, the abductors take them. Uh 65% of all children abducted are girls. 65%. Be alert because over 50% of the children kidnapped in nine family abductions are taken from the street, in a vehicle, or from a park or wooded area. Not usually like at the school or church or something. No, it's it can when happen. A whole group of girls go to Six Flags. Right. That's when it happens. A street, a park, wooded area, in a vehicle. That's why when my wife gets out of the vehicle, I always tell her, lock the doors. Yep. If Jamie in there with Okikiola or something, she got to run to her shop, lock the drawers. Um, almost 75% of those children kidnapped in family abductions are taken from their own or another's home or yard. 75% that's home that they, they, they wait and get outside playing. That's what I'm trying to snatch. Okay. So we're about to now deal with techniques for dealing with abductions. So uh, you can come on over, Yami. So Yami is is an actual dude. She's fourteen. Okay. So now she's we're gonna deal with her and Omeniki because actually she's she's, she's uh, a, a taller youth than Omeniki is a is a so woman. In this role, so, Omeniki can be playing the youth. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all like Bob and his new, his new ski mask. So, Cody. Oh, let me uh, let me need to sit this up a little bit. Just, just so y'all can see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> and my son is the same age as her, and he is like just a little bit taller, I think. Yeah. And then Jare is older than all both older than both of them, and she's no Kyra's the oldest. Oh, oh that's right. Jare is August. Yes, right. Kyra's July. All right, so we're out and about. Take hands out. There you go. Take, you know, take those hands out the pocket. I'm mm -hmm. about to say it. Now, that's number one. Easy thing to work with your child. Keep your hands out your pocket. And you all, keep your hands out your pockets. Your hands in your pockets. You can't work with them. It's easy to stop you, too. If b just puts his hands on my on, on, on my pant, on my pocket, I can't take that out. Black I take mine out. Right. And he can pin both my uh hands. He can pin both my hands and now I'm getting hit, but right. So don't don't put your hands in your pocket. That's ego. And, and it's also or, or nerves. It also to, to me, I say this person, one, they're not ready, but they, they also could be nervous. Especially if they do the rock. <laughs> Right, that's that, that's that nervous rock. I, I, I got him now, right? And the person will, will know they got you. You're not ready. Don't think you're so bad. Your hands behind your back. What, what you what you say, homie? Now what that, you say? That, that's the untrained thinking. Part of the dude, part of the dude, part of the dude who was new to the neighborhood, and he asked him who was the baddest person in the neighborhood. He walked around. And, and they rang my doorbell. I <laughs> <laughs> said, I'm gonna fight you. I said, well, Who they are, are you? I'm just saying, you know, you that dude. Right, he, he said. He said. Right, he asked him who's the baddest person in the neighborhood. Go to his house. And so, and so he, he said, "I want to fight you." I said, "I don't know you." He said, well, "I want to fight you." They say you're good. I'm better than you. I said, "Well, come on." <laughs> oh, I'm like, I got time. It was a summer too. It's nice out. Let's go. So I come down, said, and this dude was doing like. He thought he was really nice. He thought he was hitting in his face. <laughs> he caught that knee to his, his liver. He said, oh, now he catch it to the face. I'm like, dude, stop. You know, stop. Stop with the theatrics. He prevented somebody from being a bully that day. Right, exactly. See, I think <laughs> that's a <laughs> lifetime. Saved his life. You know, he rang the bell. I'm like, let me think about this. I was just about to make some money. 
You was about to make some pancakes. I'll be cool. And then I wasn't going to make them. Now, I probably went home in the house and made pancakes out of that night. I was like, I'm about to do some lunch. Read me a doodle baby a comic book. Mm-hmm. But I got time. <laughs> this is better. This is better than lunch in the comic book. So, you know, went out, handled my business, came back, then had lunch and, and read the baby in the comic book. All right, so you're out and about. Uh, gave me, I mean, teenagers out and about. <laughs> Young folk. Young folk. And let's say, because remember, most people abducted are taken off the street, right? Street park or whatever. Y'all have gone to uh Six Flags, what's it called here? It's just called Six Flags over in Georgia. Yeah. Six Flags over Georgia. That's the actual full name. Uh, quickly, Bubba, don't you have a book that discusses bullying? Yes, I do. Two actually. I have one called the, the uh African Young African Warriors Guide to Bullies and Trolls. And I also have Corio. Oh, I forgot about yeah. Corio. So now Y'all have gone to Six Flags. Um, she's separated from you, so she doesn't see you. And so now you're here. Okay. And a dude grabs you. Now, a couple of ways that a person grabs you. Usually they're trying to abduct. If they're smart, they say, girl, what's doing out here? I keep telling you to come with me. You know, uh, stop hanging out with your friends. It's like, come on. You do. You have to make sure people can hear you. You say, no, leave me alone. You're not my father. Somebody help. It was a woman who said, you're not my mother. You got me? Yeah. You got to do that. You all have to use your voices because we, when we talked about that, if I'm going to abduct her, if she said, no, stop. Why are you acting a fool? Always acting a fool. I'm going to talk to your mother about this. I can act like I'm your father. I am your father, but I can act like I'm somebody's father and take them. And people would just look away. Because they figured if father came to get them, she really in trouble. She's a teenager. Like, what the heck doing like this, boy? So, the first thing you're going to do, I wish we had some mats. You're going to have to lower yourself. So, what you're going to do is just, just sit down. If you're trying to pull... You're not gonna have so we talk on this. Grab my wrist. We talk, you know, the person can you grab the way you have it? That's that's, that's no before we grab. We talk, you know, different but we you ain't got time to teach a child that right now. Maybe, maybe later. Your, your wrist okay? Maybe later. Right now, I turn that way the Move that back. She, well, that's cool. So she was just gonna drop down. Actually, you could have that. We'll put two more right there. No problem. So you could get out like that, right? Uh, or she could, she could do that. Come over, lock my my, my wrist, and then press your elbow down. I said, ah, ah, pull away. I grab her again. Y'all got me? Unless she's just gonna take me down, you know, snap my wrist completely. And most children are not prepared for that, especially if this you're just catching this episode now. You're trying to give your child something quick. This is good to do. Uh person grabs, it doesn't matter here, and this way you don't have to think about how. Here, here, whatever, come with me here. This works against them all. You just gotta do this one thing. And they're trying to take you, you're going to sit down on your butt and then just lay back. So it's a back fall. But let's come come forward your arm over here. Why is that so it's kind of it's overlap. Okay. There we go. Okay, there, yeah, that's better. All right. So gotcha. So all you're gonna do is sit down, whether you grab like this. This, 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 they grab your hair, no. But you see that I can grab your hair when they abduct you. But they don't want you hollering, ow, oh my God. And, and this look crazy if I'm trying to take you somewhere and I just got your hair. Like, right, dad. Come on, girl, you've been out here all this time. You'd be like, what the hell? So 
Come on, girl. And so you just sit down. So turn this way. You know, pause it. What about turn this way yeah, so they can see? So I'm trying to take her. Well, this person, the abductor, trying to take her. You just sit down and lay back. I, I, I gotta let go or I fall. Mm. So now I want to stay, stay, stay back. I want to try to get to her. Now, if I'm moving in like this, that that's a person that they, they know what they're doing. Yeah, Most of the are not trained. So I'm trying to, what's he going to do? He's going to try to come in. Yep. And so now you just bring it, not from your knee, from your hip, bring your knee up and then push out, kick, kick to the, the, the thigh or the knee. Right. So you want to force them back, force them back, force them back. And now, put your hand down on the ground, force them back, force them back. Now sit up and take, put that foot and let it slide in between. Let this foot be here. And crisscross applesauce. Sit up, crisscross applesauce. Go ahead. Right. And hug, right. hug me here. Put your head right. So I, I can't get good hits off. I can't get, I can, I can get a hit, but not good hits off. And now from here, I'm off balance already. Now, do not do it because I'm going to get fucked up. <laughs> so, scoop forward. So, she's crisscross applesauce around my leg. She's hugging with her chest. So, I can't go nowhere. And now, move that desk back. I see my head. Go, Girl, I'm still going to get jacked up. So, now, she just, she sits back. She's laid back. Ah! I go down. So you keep your head close. Keep your head close to my thigh so I can't get no good hit. So I can hit you here, but I can't get a good hit off on your face. Yeah. And now you just roll to your knees. Ah! Go ahead. And that's that what it's going to do. Watch out for the... Uh... Well, if you can't get up, you can't get up like that, then use your hand. Use your hand. Get yourself up. Get out of there. Get up, get up the best way you can. Yeah. Get out of there. Get out of there. And right. she would have stepped on his legs. She would have crop bit him and all of that. Yes, you should do all of that as you leave. It. Just every part of my body, you can attack, attack. I mean, we got to work on that core too. So just make it hit your knees. So let's go again. The great part about that too is you have attracted a lot of attention to the situation. <laughs> yeah, we were like, what the hell? She right. sat down. She jacked her daddy up. Right. For real. So once again, I grab. I, I, I say, come on. So now you do it with the yell. No, leave me alone. You're not my father. Somebody help. Come on, girl. No, leave me alone. Ah. Oh, so kick, 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 kick. Just always remember that kick. That's the number one thing to go back to. And, and, and now, uh-huh. And oh shit. Ah, I'm catching myself so I don't hit I have to get Yeah, she, hit my she head. twist that ah, all right. that twist that knee. And now get up. <laughs> you can be breathing hard, get out of there. You should have cropped it one time for you know. <laughs> so now, oh, nigga, the <laughs> be let you come in. Oh, no, yeah, here's the, the crop bite come in. Crop <laughs> <laughs> bite elbow, huh? <laughs> so just back and down this one up here. Upstairs to oh, the upstairs to the right. Yep. Do you see it? Yes. So now, excuse that, y'all. Bathroom break from the door. All right. <laughs> so now, uh, grab to the wrist, sat down, right? Let's say you're somewhere and people are not around, and you're going to grab her in the headlock. Mm. Now, this is first, this here, we dealt with this. Before you really want to stop it there, but to say you don't, right? And they end up transitioning into a headlock. Now, headlock is normally like this because they're they gonna start punching with them. He may boom and then try to walk you to, to take you, right? So, you all right? Uh -huh. I didn't jack up your earring, you? No, I was just your beautifully handmade earrings with my dad. You made lovely. those? Yeah. Oh, I was like, wow. Somebody did. <laughs> right. So, to get out of the headlock, when you're trapped in the headlock, come around. Key is to put your groin against his thigh. 
You can't be shy in that. So put your groin against your thigh. Put this leg in front, that the other one behind. Put that, put your foot, yes, like that. You're gonna do that and just reach up and grab this arm. Let me turn you off so they can see. So she's grabbing this arm over here. If she can, if she can't reach the arm, then it's okay, put it in this back or what have you. Come over, come over. And so you're just going to so all you're going to tie, uh, come forward a little bit. Uh, I, I see disaster. So now all, you, <laughs> all you're going to do is sit down and you, you're taking him back that way. All you're doing is sit down, sit down. Once again, you're sitting down. Sit, sit. Oh, yeah, his head almost slammed. Yeah, yeah, woo. Yeah, okay. Oh, to you? <laughs> Sorry about that. So make sure you use your arm to take him over. So don't let him slam oh, to so you. Turn him. Right. Okay. So just turn your body a little bit. Ready? Okay, so. Let's move forward. So you don't hit the wall. All right. Put your groin to his. You you hold, you can hold him around his waist. Yeah. Now just sit down. Yeah. And then not from here. So uh, turn so they can see. Turn the keep that position. Turn the body. You see how she's on top of her. So now you're gonna do what's called a frame. Frame up. So she's gonna put this arm instead of putting it on the ground and balancing. The blade of her arm is gonna be when I say blade, I'm talking about the baby inside in his face. So you grab now, to, and, now this one. Keep this. And this one right. He's trying to hold on. This one grabs your wrist there. Right, and now you just push up as you as you look up to the sky. Push down his face. I can't keep that. Now, it, it'd be better if you use the blade. So this is the soft part. Use the bone right there. So she's using the bone of her of her wrist or arm, mm -hmm. looking up. And now get the hell out of there. You can do that also if you were if she was mounted on top and I was trying to hold her. Same thing. Right, you same the frame. So once again, if I'm if so you stand, you're doing the same that. sitting down. So today's thing is sitting down. We call that energy a shoe. Okay. So headlock. Headlock. She grabs him around his waist or around his arms, right? And then just sits. And as she sits, she takes him turns, she takes him down. She puts her the bone into his face, pushes up, as she looks up, and now she gets the hell out of there. <laughs> Couple. You, can give, you may be able to give him some shots in them both. Now, I'm thinking a younger person may not want to be giving shots to the dude. You don't want to be having it too long. Right. You want to push that fool and get up and run. Number one, and deal with the shock of him getting done like that. Okay. Now, a smaller child is not going to be able to do that sit, that sit down. Okay. So, a smaller child, if a smaller child is taken. Uh, he can be arm around. Yeah, now, small child can do that sit down right there that, that she did. Right. But this one, when you take the body, maybe not. Right. So, so what a smaller child can do, though, you put this here, this can go into the groin, or you put this, now their hand, well, a small child here. You can go here. Okay. So small side go here and here. Grab waist and here. Now you can sit down because you're pulling the waist yeah. down. Okay. Or you can both hands can pull at the waist because you're smaller. So this time, homie Nikki, you're gonna this is to block out his legs so it can't move the, the groin press, right? And the child can do that. And now just pull against their waist. Not up here. It's not going to happen. They're too short. So I'm, I'm pulling the waist like this. I can't resist that. Like I can resist up here too. Right. Yeah, no and and, and then, then sit down with him. As you break his waist across his head. Uh, Hill up. Grab his waist. And you're pulling his waist. You, you just grab his waist. So I, I don't want to. The leg can lift. I'm thinking a small child like seven, eight is not going to be there. And now just turn his waist. <laughs> so what she's doing, move this hand so you can see. She's just 
pulling that back behind him, like turning his waist behind. And it's in the it's it's in the hip well. Right. So, so it's she, right, she's right in there. Very so uncomfortable. Grab in the hip hip well like it's a hook. Yeah, Read it. And so now turn and then sit. See, he's going down already. And now same thing. Frame against him. Even if he doesn't still have a hand on you, you want to cause pain. Mm -hmm. Put that frame up and get out. Stay there. So if y'all can see me, can they see me on here? Um, can you turn this way? So hand around. Even if it's not, when you frame, when you get up. Oh, um, see, he's tapping. Okay. Put, so that's... Push that there. And then and keep it as long as you can. Even if you put one hand there, keep that there. So you can get out. Get up. Okay? Yeah, well. So keep pressure on his face, even as you're standing. I see now. Because you don't want him to grab you again. Right. And that um I wasn't doing the frame properly. So that's what made me think that I had to hit him a couple of times. But if you're doing frame the frame down, properly, then you can you just get up. Space, right. right. Okay. You can use that frame up. If if I grabbed her frontwards standing, if, if I grabbed her like this, she could she could use that still and get out of that. Now standing, come in. So it's not it's best to frame when you're on the ground. Standing, it's best to. Can I, they see I, that? I know it. I know this. It's best to. It's best to uh, hold on, hold on. So nasty. So you put a mask there. You put your hand in their waist. Oh my now God. it's still close. You might want to turn your back to the to the camera so they can see how the mask is because they can't. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. okay. So yeah, can see so he grabs me around. So I grab him around the head or anywhere around. So I'm grab, I'm putting the mask on his face like that. He's wearing the mask. My 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 thumb is under his nose, and I push up on his nose, and I squeeze him close to me with this hand in the small of his back. I push my hips close. He's saying tap, tap, tap. I would just slam his body down to the ground. No, he could have did that. Or slam it through the window. He could have did that from the side by just using my head like that too. He did the same thing. Shh, the side. Uh, now he grabs the wrist. I want you all to sit down. But he grabs my wrist. I can easily just go close, put the small on his back. Boop. He goes down. So. The mask is one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, he loves that. <laughs> Catch him from here. Oh, oh, this this the right here. My finger. This the I'm behind him. Oh, this is the bad. This is the one that's pain. <laughs> yeah, so he's saying that, that, that hurts there, right? That hurts. And so this here, if How you get him out of there? she gets out of it, come around, he grabs her wrist. And you see this going on. It don't have to be your child, it's a child. Right, right. Okay. He grabs the wrist, so say the no and everything. Give it to me. No. You're not my mother. You're not, you're my, not, well, you're not my father. You're not my father. Somebody, Somebody help. Somebody help. Do it again. It's loud. No, you're not my father. Somebody help. I'm her daddy. Girl, come on here. Over there. Sit down on his ass. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now, then I say, <laughs> I'm trying to help. <laughs> so, 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 sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so you mad. Say, run, little girl. I have him. <laughs> Wrong little girl, that way wasn't mine. Whoa, little girl failed. <laughs> uh, so you say, run little girl, I'm Captain Sable. No, no, actually be Captain Sable with a baby. And so you have him here, he's tapped. Then you got his arm there, turn that over. Oh, yeah. Here, then you get him here. And we back to tap, tap some more. Then you bring him here, then tap some more. So, yeah, and then bring you know, you can do all that, be the hero at six black. <laughs> all right. So, uh, no, actually, dance. if you see, huh? I was going to. If you see something time. going on, she's no, you're not my father, and all that shit happening. And even she lay back, throws him herself. Right. Don't be like, ooh, that's a good technique. Right. Or, she or star, a world star. In. Right, right. Yeah. Film it. Right. Somebody going to be filming. Crazy. Sure. But. She jumps up, he jumps behind her. Hey, brother, what's going on? Right, if anything, do that. Right, you can't. Hey, what, what's, what's happening, man? Create some separation. You know, 
and then he try, try, no no because he's trying to make forty thousand dollars or more selling right it. right well i have to no 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 block that and if he keeps on now i have to take him i have to take him. right you don't necessarily have to do that just you can hey sir sir what's going on yeah. do the best you can to be a barrier for that child so they can get to where they're going. Right. And if that happens to be the, the which would really be weird, because the child did all right, that right, right. well, that'd be weird, but at least you got time to calm down and all that. And like when you heard the parents doing right. very foul things to their own children. Oh, that, that too. So, hey, it may be. I don't know, but I just know something got to relax. Chill my child. Yeah, I understand. Do it they relax. Yeah, uh, calm security, down. Security here going to get up. They think so, But, uh, my comrade over there, you gonna talk to your child right <laughs> yeah. now? Hey, chill, dude. Get in the situation, man. Create some I, space. I was at at the house. Then me I was playing with this little girl. I don't know if you remember that she playing and, and her drunk. He was a boyfriend of her mother. He was drunk, came down to the house. She said, get your ass in the house. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who, who you talking to? I'm talking to. I ain't. I said, well, you better shut your mouth. Do you remember that? That dude, it was a, a drunk dude, right? I, I think I may have told y'all to go in. It was you and that the little girl that asked you to come play, right? I said, she ain't going nowhere with me, dude. She ain't going nowhere. Oh, it's a stepdad boyfriend or whatever. It was, it was, the, it was, the, it was the mother's, I her mother's that. boyfriend, right? <laughs> I didn't care if it was a biological father. Right. Acting like that, because you ain't in the right mind state. Mm -hmm. Let's wait for a minute. And if you're the biological father, God damn it, call the police. Call. I'm ready for them too. Call the police because I'm protecting this child. One day I want to interview you and me on what it's like having a father. Like, I want to know what your life. want to know what your life was like, Amy. We hear yeah. from him. We want to talk to the children. Ah. We want to talk to his wife. We want to find what it's like to live with the Man. Bible doing. What is it like? She said, "Y'all can, can ask it. Being with me is living with the land." <laughs> Living with the lamb on the yes, next yes, episode. That's a gentle yes. show. Living yeah. with, Living the, with lamb. the lamb. I can't wait for that. For that. That's good. So, those are the way. Remember, you're going to sit down. It's simple. Yes, simple sir. technique. Dealing with a bully. You can sit down too another way. So, a person's bully. He got his hands in your face and stuff. I would say this one is on. Now you know he's about to, you know, he, to do it. he may he may touch you, right? You, you place your hands, keep them there, and sit down. Mm. But this one here, I mean, I'm in it. So all I'm doing is sitting once again. But I got his wrist; these are going to get torn up. Yeah, his head's probably going to get slammed <laughs> into that. So you know, teach your children. This is last resort. He can grab me. I don't want him to headbutt me, right. throw me. Just sit down. And it's easy for your children. They got to learn multiple techniques. I'm going to let your wrist go as we go down. So, so all I'm going to do is sit, like I told them. Now, both your hands are occupied. Your child going to want to do this. This has to be trained because all you're doing is sitting on your butt. Your butt can take this more than this can. This here, I can snap my uh, collarbone. My elbow, my wrist, if it's not conditioned or, or trained right, stretch. So just tell them to sit down and they move. You can use your knees as well. You don't have to just fall back. Yeah, they can. I mean, they, they no, can. I'm talking about using your knees to descend. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Yourself. So you, you don't fall like a tree. <laughs> you do bend your knees as you sit, right? So That's I'm just going to take me off balance. I'm just going to bend. And as I bend, I'm mm -hmm. going to sit. So I let go so they didn't damage him. But she was here. Uh -huh. I kept. Yeah. My hands here and slam his head into the ground. And you don't I don't want to fall on him because now I'm dealing with knees and knees all this stuff to his fall groin on. And to his sternum. So it's pain. That's that's not a and, and bend your knees when you fall. Don't don't fall with straight legs like this. That's right. Bend. Bend. So bend. That's and so now boom. right, boom, he gets hurt, not me. Yeah. Got me? So I'm that that's painful. I'm gonna peel off of that. And and keeping that there, and we falling. You saw where he, he went that way because that's locking his wrist. Right. His wrist is locked up bad. He lands here plus his wrist lock, dislocated wrist, or at least strained badly, and a knee to the sternum. Oh boy. Yeah. That would be terrible. Right? A knee to really solar plexus. Yeah. If I go down a little bit, that's to his liver. Yeah. Or 
rib could get punctured. Your rib can right. get broken and punctured your bone. There's a lot that can happen to him. Right. The, the, all you're doing is sitting down. Right. Sit down, tuck your chin so when you lay back, you don't hit your head on the ground. And That's hey, key. Tuck your chin. And in school, when you go to the office, you fail. Right. right. I was going to say, that's you, you the fail. great thing about this is that it doesn't exactly. look it's aggressive. You didn't do anything. Right. right. And it's not, you can you can use that at the club. You can use that right. at work. You can use it's that like, at school. Fail. It <laughs> doesn't right. look aggressive, but you you hurt them. And they seen, they, people seen it. What did it look like? You right. failed. You really right. didn't fall. Right. He pushed you and failed. Either right. way, either way. Even, even when you sit down. up, when you sit up with the crisscross applesauce, I'm sitting up holding on because I ain't on the kitchen. Right, I'm holding on. Yeah. You still ain't do nothing. And then he was, he was so aggressive pushing, I fell back. All of us on there. Right. And when I got up, I don't know how. I just <laughs> twisted whatever right. happened to his leg. I don't know. Right. I'm running. I stepped on his nose. I didn't know. I'm so trying to get away. Right. Because remember, you're not trying to beat their ass. You're trying to survive and escape. I'm so and glad right. you started saying that, Bobby, because Black folks, we, you know, we don't pose to survive. We pose to win TV. Win. We got the John Wicked out of there. Mm-hmm. Right. You can't just leave. You can't just leave. <laughs> and, and so that, and to me, if I, I saw somebody do that, I'm like, beautiful technique. I'd be, you know, y'all know how I get. Oh! You know, uh, they probably be like, why is that dude cheering for the person running? Because I just saw something that, and now they asked, why'd you cheer? I was just happy she got away. I was like, I don't know, she's somebody who trained her. Yeah. She got good technique, right? So just sit down. Remember that. The lesson for today, sit down. Tuck your chin and sit down on your ass and gravity's going to take you back. Knees. Bend your knees as you sit. Tuck that chin. Sit down. And it goes quick. Just sit. Okay? So thank you all. Uh, Thank you, Yay Me, for joining us. You well, helped us out. Sure and uh, we're going to do this Teen Summit type episode with all teams. If you know what Teen Summit is, you know what it is. We're, we're there asking other teens. And maybe you can host that, ask other teens what they're concerned about as far as. Huh? Yeah, yeah so you're standing there. It's like a, a talk show similar. Like what, you know, what, what are you concerned about? You know, why you out there? Uh, yeah. Coming home from night from right. from chilly, what 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 scares you? Have you ever had a situation that you had to defend yourself right. or that you thought you might? You know, that so that's teens. It's going to be a teen summit type episode where we get going to get other teens in here and talk to them and uh, do that. Okay, I want to try to probably do that next month for one of the episodes. We definitely have right. summer coming, so we have time. Right, we have, I'm we seeing have a teams. lot of new people chiming in. I th- Sis Dance, this is the first time I've seen. Charles Chris Williams. said, "Poor Belay, Sis Dance, it looks like you could snap his back if you kept pulling him in at the waist." No, so the back, the spine is built where you're not snapping his back unless he had to go to extreme. I had to be Michael Byers to snap his back. He'll fall before that happens. Yeah, I'm going to drop first. There's no way I can snap his back like that and bring his shoulders to his ass. He ain't going to let that <laughs> He will fall first. Yeah. And it's too what much weight for me to just have him stand there. Yeah. And then toss him over my shoulders. <laughs> he'll do something, but they ain't going to snap his back. Right, it's not going to snap his back. Snapping the back. Snapping the... Uh, For Vila, though, I get that part. Snapping the shoulder. Not the shoulder. Snapping the snow shoulders. Pretty simple. Snapping the back. Snapping the hips are the two hardest to do. Snapping the hip is hardest to do, but once you if you do it, it's devastating. You know, people die from dislocated hips. Anybody ever snap their thigh? <laughs> you snap well, it's not a joint. I've broken somebody's thigh. Ooh, that was hard. So, and I've seen a kick that and this was beautiful. There's a fighter, Dennis Alexio. White dude, Italian dude, you know, he's always talking crap. I can beat anybody. I can do it. You know, what about so and so? Oh, he a, he a black fighter, so of course I can beat him. He got checked. Is that the one? That's the dude. His name is Maurice Smith. Maurice Smith was fighting him for the championship. And Maurice Smith kicked him in this thigh with a round kick. It broke that, slammed into this, and broke that one. Ooh, ruined. 
it, it ended this next year of career. Yeah. I was so happy. Broken femurs. <laughs> my 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 mother. I was I was we watched the fight. I was in there like yeah. little boy like woo. I was so happy because this next year was a racist, arrogant bastard, and Morty Smith brother ended all that talk. Snapped both his goddamn shit and ended his career at one point at one time. So Maury Smith and this guy, they used to train to get some Maury Smith was a great striker, one of the greatest in the world. And this brother, uh, mm, mm, mm. his brother used to fight and he fought in the first UFC. I can't remember, but his, his brother was a better fighter than him. His brother was a great, a great grappler. He taught Maury Smith the grappling. Maury Smith taught him the striking. And so they were just beasts mm. in the UFC. Early UFC, they were beasts. I think they both were the champions of both of their, their things. Anyway, so lesson that is, get you a comrade, teach your comrade what you know, they teach you what you know, and you're mm -hmm. both better for it. Yeah, okay. So thank you, yay me. Thank y'all. Thank me. <laughs> and, uh, and thank the family for thank, tuning in. Right. Thank the, the Warrior Class fam for tuning in and sticking with us. We love y'all. So looking forward to the merch. Yes, we're going to get that merch done. Yes, we are. Uh, and, th and this is, uh, like you said, the Teen Summit part will be like a continuation of this because we realize as we was getting in it, it's a lot to this. It's a lot yes, to this. It's, a, it's a whole lot. I mean, we, we had to cut even just the bullying part. Right. Because of like, when I was writing both books for the for the bullying right for children, I was like, oh God, I gotta stop myself somewhere. Yeah. But this this new idea is coming. And those are both somewhere. like some of your biggest books too, like as far yes. as the amount. Yes. And and okay. even so with this, and I, I want to start doing that further, I started going to what psychologists were saying. That's what you know. So because I'm not a psychologist, but we, we deal with, you know, if we can put in what child psychologists are saying and things of that nature, mm -hmm. it'd be good to have those things and, and maybe get a child psychologist on here to come ever so often and be a guest. Right. Just to have understanding. That's what we seek. Yep. So love y'all. Be safe out here. Absolutely. Stay black or whatever it is that you may be. Peace. Peace. Give him the, the piss. No, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> I can't believe you are almost as tall as both.